I hope you are doing well. I want us to take a short reading from the book of Psalms, chapter 127. It says, if God's grace doesn't help the builders, they will labor in vain to build a house. If God's mercy doesn't protect the city, all the centuries will circle it in vain. It's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night, toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough. Now God can provide. I want you to see this. It says God can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep. Now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy any time we come to God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy any time we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to this. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it. Also, by doing this, you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel. Then, don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section. Hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so and you are new here. And then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too. You were blessed, son. Stay blessed. Hallelujah. Comes out of your destiny. Praise the Lord. So core value number one, help me. Number one. This is what we want you to become. Number two. Character. Number three. The anointing. We believe in the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Don't just say it's for them. Number four, excellence. Say after me, excellence. Very important. Thank you, Jesus, for what you are doing. We thank you for the gift of vision. And we thank you because we can structurally build people and make them wonders, even like David. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. All right, bring out something to write. Please stop bringing... Can I have this? Buy something like this. Hallelujah. Please, buy a very good notebook. That no matter how careless you are, you won't tear it around. So that you can document some of these things. Hallelujah. Many of you are always writing. But when we say write, you just search your pocket and check and bring out one paper. That you wrote list to go to the... You won't... Whatever you do not value, you won't attract to your life. Hallelujah. Whatever you dishonor repels you. Praise God. Write the following words down. Thank you, Jesus. Number one. Mediocrity. Write the following words down. One, mediocrity. What does it mean to be a mediocre? It means to be ordinary. It means to be of moderate quality. To be of moderate quality. Another definition. Mediocrity means it's neither good nor bad. It's not spectacular, but it's not wrong anyway. Barely adequate. Barely adequate. Common. Inferior. These are the words that describe what it means to live in mediocrity or to be a mediocre. I'll come again because I want you to get it. Hallelujah. You see, let me teach you something. We're going to teach it in the Bible school. It's called homiletics. That's the theological name. The art of preaching. Repent from this jargon kind of preaching that people do. No, 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 no. And people are nodding. You are not getting anything. At the end of it, what did you get? You are not being changed. 
if that's how your lecturer teaches you i assure you you will never graduate see the goal of teaching i'm not preaching are you listening to me to preach means to declare to teach means to explain there is a difference preaching gives you knowledge teaching gives you understanding the word of god is taught the gospel is preached so for many of you who just go nah, 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 you're just rapping and ranting uh -uh, calm down are the people following if you leave the people more confused you ended up wasting their time and their destinies hallelujah that's why i'm taking it slowly because i really want you to get this have you written the first word so what does it mean ordinary of moderate quality write down the second word indifference indifference those of you outside the lord will bless you i'm seeing you from here and i'm telling you my see i look forward to a big auditorium mighty auditorium where there will be light everywhere and those of you who are doubting will not be there oh yes that's what they told that's what he told he said you will see it but you eat of it when prof was saying ah one of the best institutes some of you are saying ah really it's not your fault you're a student when we are done with you we'll kick out that mindset in jesus name so write quickly indifference it means lack of interest please take note of that word we'll be discussing it seriously today lack of interest number two it means lack of concern lack of sympathy lack of interest lack of concern lack of sympathy another word nonchalance i mean another definition of indifference nonchalance nonchalance it's what nigerians call i don't care attitude don't write that don't write that you're a leader don't write that i'm just helping you understand say i'm a leader say it i'm a leader, I'm a leader. indifference the third word excellence write down this word excellence what does it mean the quality of being unusually good the quality of being unusually good the quality of being unusually good the quality of having superior merit to be of superior merit being exceptional surpassing ordinary standards i like that surpassing ordinary standards that's what it means to be excellent surpassing ordinary standards being extraordinary in other words above the ordinary possessing the highest or finest quality excellence write down the last word change c-h-a-n-g-e change it means to transform or to convert change change means to transform it means to convert it means to become different or to undergo an alteration change means to become different or undergo an alteration to be altered thank you jesus hallelujah now our discussion tonight is going to be around these four words and please i pray with all my heart and i'm still praying to god as i'm standing here that within these few minutes i will wrestle something in your mind and shake out anything that is not of god and if you believe that say amen, amen. hallelujah 
I'm teaching tonight on dominion through excellence. Dominion through excellence. Dominion through excellence. The greatest enemy that I've found in my life and from the word of God, the greatest enemy of excellence is an attitude of indifference. The greatest hindrance, the greatest enemy to a life of excellence is indifference. Hallelujah. And now, look up please everybody. Now you can look up. Let me teach you why. When you examine the body of Christ, you find out that we covered a bit of that in our full gospel series. You can get the teachings. Very important. But you find out that in the body of Christ, there is an emphasis on what I want to call the spiritual side of life. Hallelujah. Every Sunday, you just stand on the road and you see people moving from place to place. Ask them, where am I going to? Say church. Say for what? Say to worship. What does that mean? I don't know. And they are moving. And so, you have people who are moving from one place to the other. And suddenly, when two people are gisting, when they step into church, they stop talking. They assume, uh, what do we call it now? An attitude, a sacred attitude, and they sit down. And now the pastor sits down and just discusses and then just gets up and changes his form and comes up and begins to preach and talk. And everybody just sits down and behaves himself. And then we end the service by sharing the grace the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, be with us now and forevermore. Amen. And everybody resumes to what they want to call what? They are normal lives. Hallelujah. And now, the tragedy that has happened in the body of Christ is that we have taught because of certain revelations like the favor of God, the sovereignty of God, the mercy of God, um, destiny help us, you know, powerful teachings like this. We have had a lot of emphasis on these teachings. And it has really not helped the body in some measures because it has brought people to a point where certain things like competence, certain things like excellence, certain things like diligence, certain things like determination, certain things like knowledge, study, um, hard work, and so on and so forth is no longer respected. Hallelujah. Why should I be diligent when overnight... God can give me houses I did not build. Hallelujah. Why should I be diligent when I can just sit down and I can't speak English but then I can find myself in, in the television ministry and I can heal the sick. Hallelujah. Why should I be excellent? And you know, the sad thing is this. Let me tell you where that error came from. Many men of God left everything to go into a genuine pursuit for God. Are you listening to me? They cut themselves away from society. The Bible says through desire, Proverbs 18 verse 1, a man having separated himself, he said he intermeddled with all wisdom. And so in the course of the sacrifice to get the anointing, you hear people talk of 100 days of prayer and fasting, 1 year, 2 years, 10 years, like Paul in the wilderness of Arabia and so on and so forth. Now, when ministers get the anointing, listen to me. And then they also have character. When they come up, they find out that, ah, uh -uh, you know, people are coming. There are crowds coming because people have needs. And if you can meet that need, you become a magnet. People will keep coming. Hallelujah. They can criticize you, but they will still come. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? But then, that's not the issue. The major issue is that when that begins to happen, now the man of God begins to talk and he tells the people, I didn't read any book. I didn't study anything. I didn't learn anything. 
all I did was what? I pursued God and I prayed. And out of that, I built an excellent ministry. Correct? Now, that's not wrong because that's how he came. But then, the danger is if he does not contend for higher knowledge in the realm of the spirit, he will begin to model a portrait of how he got to the position he was and begin to teach people. Are you listening to me? He begins to tell people, look, all these books, they are jargons. Just forget about it. And now you have a church that is anointed. Excellent man of God, but is a bad leader. Are you listening to me? Wonderful person. But you find out that there are all kinds of cases. They don't know who keeps the offering in the church. The pastor collects 100,000 offering. He kept it in his drawer. Later, he came and found 10,000. He said, who carried it? Because he does not know that there are principles of corporate financing, for instance. And he doesn't see the need for it. Are you listening to me? Now, he knows that people are coming. But he forgets that the people are human beings. Only because they want the anointing so they can stand. He said, let, let them keep standing. If they really want to be blessed. After all, in the days of Catherine Kuman, people waited from this to this. So, certain principles, listen to me, that can prepare us to contend with our society and the 21st century is not taught and built in people. Are you listening to me? And people have been taught that when you follow certain principles of life and success and achievement and the rest, it is you are reducing your spiritual journey. So they tell people, forget it. All that is there is fast and pray. I assure you, once you can kick away Satan, your destiny will open. Now the people go through every deliverance. They pray in tongues for years and they find out that this equation is not adding up. Are you listening to me? And tonight I want to help us that there is an aspect of dominion that can only happen through excellence. Praise the Lord. Dominion through excellence. Jesus gave us a command. What we call the great commission. Unfortunately, the message of the great commission, even by many evangelists, have been misunderstood. Because Jesus gave us a commandment. He said, go ye into all the world. You can get our teaching, conquering cosmos. The word there is cosmos. The word there is not just two people sitting down who are drinking. Go into all the social system, the strata and the sphere of society. I told you that the gospel is not just a message. The gospel is a value system. Are you listening to me? The gospel is not just a message. It's an ideology. It's a value system that seeks to enthrone Jesus and his principles and his culture first in your life and across every sphere of influence. Are you understanding me? This is the gospel Jesus left. When Jesus walked upon the earth, he affected people and society. The reason why our gospel is powerless is because number one, we do not understand the Great Commission. Number two, we do not understand the components that make the Great Commission work. Number three, we, we are not interested to pay the price and make sure that we have those components working in our lives. Say amen. So there is a place for anointing. There is a place for prayer. There is a place for fasting. There is a place for knowledge. There is a place for wisdom. There is a place for excellence. There is a place for character. See, the truths in the Bible were not supposed to substitute one another. They were supposed to complement one another. When you begin to substitute one truth with another, you are going to land into error. The truth of God's word where if it is in the Bible, it was not meant to substitute another. It was meant to complement. Hallelujah. So we have a society that cannot match the challenges that come. And the, the terrible thing about it, listen to me. Listen to me. Is that many of our mentors... And our fathers and our leaders and our role models have not created a true picture of leadership. They have only created a true picture of pastoral ministry. Are you listening to me? So you see someone who God is calling into the area of business behaving like a pastor. Because that's all he has seen and learned. 
Are you listening to me? And we tell people that progress in the spirit is when you become a pastor. Wrong. Wrong. God's idea was not to raise pastors. I hope you understand that the fivefold ministry was not God's original agenda. It came as a result of the fall of man. So he had to give gifts to men. Ephesians 4 from verse 10 to 12. The Bible says when he led captivity captive, he gave gifts to men. Some first apostles and prophets and teachers and evangelists and pastors. And they have an assignment for the equipping of the saints. That they the saints will come to a point of maturity and do the work of the ministry. What is the work of the ministry? The great commission. Invade cosmos. With the value system of heaven. There are many Christians who are born again. But they have not been taught. That the message that Jesus brought. Was not a religious message. He came with an ideology. He came with a value system. That means if you embrace Jesus and his message and his principles. You should become something. Hallelujah. Predictable. Unfortunately what we teach in church is potent enough to raise people from wheelchairs but not potent enough to produce leaders and produce champions and world changers men and women who can take charge of society so we have the church there healing the sick and raising people from crutches wonderful but go to every office you see unbelievers there in the senate unbelievers there and believers are suffering and the kingdom is not truly advancing motion without progress Hallelujah. And every time all we know to do is, oh Satan, Satan is behind your life. If you can get this devil, I promise you everything in your life will change. I beg to defer that that is not completely true. We preach, we set people free here. But let me tell you the truth. Sometimes many people call and say, ah, but they prayed for me. And I don't feel those demonic influences, but my life has not moved forward. Because you see, it, success is a component of many factors. Impartation is only one of the components. Success is an equation with many variables that equal success. These things have not been taught in church. I told you to write four words. We are going to discuss them. The most dangerous of all of them is that word called indifference. You know what indifference is? Look up, please. You know what indifference is? Indifference is a state of lack of interest and non-challenge. There are many people who hear this message right now and just shut down. Say, this kind of thing. I thought we were going to talk on the seven planes of entering the seven dimension in the realm of the spirit. Hold on. Hold on. Because the first shock I need you to know is that those who God is sending you to are not born again. Are you listening to me? They don't speak in tongues. They don't know the Holy Spirit. They do not respect the value system of the kingdom. And so your first interaction with cosmos will not be your praying tongues. Your first interaction will be the spirit of excellence. Write this because I want to challenge you tonight. I really want to challenge you. Indifference. I don't care. There are many believers who do not see a need. There's no pressure to upgrade their lives, to move from where they are to where God wants them to be. Indifference. The greatest killer. We preach about lust. We preach about fornication. We preach about all of these things. Wonderful. These things are bad. But let me tell you, we must also preach about all these other things like indifference. Do you know that when Jesus challenged the Laodicean church in Revelations, one of his challenge towards them was indifferent. He said, you are neither, was it the Laodicean church? One of the seven churches. He said, you are neither what? Hot nor... How can a man be neither hot nor cold? So you are standing neutral. That state of being neither hot nor cold does not mount pressure in your spirit. You are not extreme in anything. 
Hallelujah. So if people criticize this side, you can identify with them. If they criticize this side, you can identify with them. And that's the most comfortable position in life. Mediocrity. Indifference. Many of us are here. And when you hear messages like this, you just sit down and be wondering, is he really talking about me or some other people? Indifference. It has killed the church. We have no voice. Hallelujah. There are many people today, listen to me, who are unemployed in Nigeria, not because of Satan, because they do not understand the principles that will get them from where they are into a great place. I tell you the truth. Many people are not honest because in Nigeria, we love transferring responsibilities. It was not my fault. My stupid father took me to a herbalist. Look at where I am now. What did he do about it? Nothing. So we love it when we transfer responsibility and blame. Hallelujah. We love it when we spiritualize everything and cover for any lapse on our own part. Praise God. This is very, very important. And I get very irritated when I see people not teaching the body of Christ all of the principles that are supposed to equip them. The Bible says that the house is a come and I will show you the bride, the lamb's wife. And he took me and showed me a city and heavenly Jerusalem. He said it lieth four square. The length, the breadth, and the height were equal. In other words, there are many components that make a complete Christian. And a good preacher and a good leader must be able to expose all the people to all of those components so that there will be a holistic building. You don't just have prayer warriors who have broke failures in life or anoint or prosperous people who are victims of Satan or anointed people who are bad fathers, bad mothers. You change a mind. You change a man by changing his value systems. His mindset. Hallelujah. That's why wicked men like Adolf Hitler and all these great men, they not only killed people, they sought to introduce new value systems. That's what they call brainwashing. You know what brainwashing is? They give you a new value system that can make you look at your blood mother who gave birth to you and you have another value system that, is, that does not even have respect for her value system. And many of you may not realize we are there clapping and throwing people under the anointing in church and Satan is infiltrating everywhere with a value system. Hallelujah. Gradually, they are kicking anything that looks like God out of schools, out of everything. Are you aware of that? Let me tell you the truth. Those who wanted to do that had that agenda since. But they knew that some of them needed to become authorities in their field. So that they can gain the required influence to carry out that wicked agenda. And for decades they paid the price with that singular vision. Are you listening to me? What you see happening to the world today was a decision that people set and they paid the price for years not in the body of Christ we just teach people that you get born again receive the impartation and go in China today China has a dream of becoming the world superpower and let me tell you something the only person who can stop them is God are you listening to me you go and read the history of China and they came with certain leaders and the leaders began to put a new value system in the people. They looked at their statistics and knew that the way Chinese people were giving birth anyhow, very soon the country was going to have a problem and they began to come up with measures of birth control using flamboyant advertisement that changed the mindset of people and attracting a lot of people, giving them a lot of things. Hallelujah. And then they started encouraging industrialization among their people are you listening to me 
they started letting them see how much a Chinese product is better than any other product in the world. And listen, they drafted strategies to put that mindset even in a little Chinese boy. A little Chinese person, although he cannot speak English, he has self-confidence more than a lot of people. A system. Hallelujah. And right now, China produces a lot of things. Many Nigerians run and produce inferior goods and run back into the country because of a country that can believe themselves. And the last time I checked Forbes' list of most influential men, President Obama was not number one. Because certain people have an agenda and they are pressing towards it. But when you come to the church, if we listen, listen to me, Christians. A great man called Matthew Ashimo Lowo, KICC, when he went to London, he found out that although we were colonized by the British, he saw that there was still that element of racism in the place. And the blacks, a lot of people, some run from Lagos, follow through bridge, follow through everywhere, not by Plano. They get to London through all kinds of ways and they survive there. They catch them, they jail them for six months. After six months, they bring them and they are roaming on the street. And he looked at these people and saw a depraved people that did not believe in themselves. And he says, I will change these people. And he set up his ministry and brought them. He began to teach them certain principles. After a few years, over seven, right now as I speak to you, over 60 to 70 percent of the people in his church own conglomerates and a lot of things the moment that happened the british government started noticing him because they started commanding influence they own the companies they own the banks they own the media and so you cannot have this kind of influence and not meet with the leaders and the kings that influence the minds of the people are you listening to me systemic invasion not just I receive I receive train people teach them give them the mindset build them I guarantee you you will fire them like the foxes that Samson set on fire and left them the Bible did not say he came to supervise them he just set the foxes on fire two by two and released them and the Bible says they devoured the farm of the Philistines Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? Dominion through excellence. Lots of people do not, we don't care about excellence. It's not your fault. You were not taught. We the leaders who God has anointed have been there trying to look for money, trying to look for fame, trying to look for power, trying to go on air, trying to bring ridiculous projects that God did not send us to do. And we will not concentrate. He said, who are these? He said, what is this that you see? He said, four horns. He said, these horns have risen to judge Judah. He said, but I will send carpenters. 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 What is the work of a carpenter? To construct. And so God sends us as carpenters. And we begin to train men who will judge these horns. The Bible says in Obadiah 21, it says, And saviors shall arise out of Zion and shall judge the Mount of Esau. Let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. If all you keep getting every week in Koinonia is falling on the floor or hands lay, being laid on you, I assure you, you will hate me in the next 10 years because you will see men who didn't pray like you, who didn't fast like you, but you are now moving around with CVs, praying in tongues for jobs in their own companies. Are you listening to me? That's what we have in church. So a lot of believers are confused. They cannot understand why a man who does not love God, sleeping with ladies all around, but he's the one who owns Virgin Atlantic. I didn't say that, oh, it's an example. Before you, you go and write on newspaper that Joshua Selman said, this. no, 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 example. Hallelujah. Or you find out that 
every believer we are just praying praying and somebody says hallelujah the lord showed me that soon we'll have a tv ministry and the man claps he said am i not a prophet shame on him what of the owner of the tv ministry who can kick your program out at any time why not train people and teach them the principles challenge and inspire people release an anointing and release knowledge and understanding in them let somebody rise and own a television station let somebody rise and and put a software that before it works it must say a scripture you must listen to it you should know me by now as you are clapping i hope you are getting it hallelujah now every time we say this thing people just say whoa but i indifference after people say they just say kai this message was very nice what are you doing about it hallelujah i don't see limits in my life i am telling you see this is my mindset i don't see limits you never never will come and find me putting my hand like this and you say why i say kai i'm thinking of i'm always optimistic but i know whom i have been and I am persuaded. I'm persuaded. Look at lots of graduates in Nigeria. They love God. They were presidents of fellowships. But they were only taught the side of the anointing. Now, they go for a job interview. There's nobody to lay hands on. And they have to queue. A long queue. They were not taught principles. How to, how to do a lot of things. They have no character. They have. They don't understand the principles. There are many people who are who get jobs, and for years they are not promoted, and they get angry because they lack the necessary knowledge to leave the stage where they are and go beyond. And they think the remedy is just prayer, and they keep praying, praying, and God leads them to a book, and they look. They say, No, no, this guy, I know him. is is not is not a fiery person. Let me ask you a question. How has your life been so far? Is there anything that inspires you? There are names that when you call, you call names that are very nice. Look at the sound that we are using. Because of this mic, many people have gotten healed. Many people have gotten blessed. The media is streaming right now. There's Facebook and Twitter. This was somebody who believed himself enough to get up and take influence. Excellence at all times. See, the spirit of excellence is not about money. This is what I want you to get. A lot of people have given excuses as to why their lives are the way they are. They say, if only I had more money. Koinonia, say you are rich. That's why you can do everything. It's a spirit. It's a culture. It's an attitude. Excellence is not just about money. It's about a spirit. I know many millionaire ministers who are not excellent at all. They are anointed. They are filled with the Holy Ghost. They are not excellent. The quality of being outstanding. The quality of being thorough. Write it, thorough. Many people are not thorough in their lives. You are studying a principle. You are not thorough. We like stopping halfway. 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 We don't ask the right questions. We don't pay the price to stay long enough. We are always in a hurry. No thoroughness. That's the result. Lack of excellence. Someone wants to learn keyboard. He just learned something small. You start roaming around and telling everybody, I can play. The fact that they are not attending to you is a message. Get angry and go back. Let me tell you something. Excellence defies religion. It defies gender. It defies race and ethnicity. You meet an excellent man. He will break any barrier in life. I was listening to a speech by one brilliant lady, Nigerian lady. Hallelujah. On KICC. And I think she's one of the editors of these great magazines. And when she was speaking, 
I could, I, I sat down and I felt like a child. I said, Lord, I need to rise beyond this level I am. I am where I am today because of the degree of value I've placed on excellence. If I step higher, I will rise higher than this. There are many preachers. And you know, let me tell you the thing about results and excellence. Every time you keep nonchalance and you don't move forward and someone else is moving forward, you will be angry. When I drive a golf and I bring here, there are many of you who will see, you are happy because it's consoling your present position. But if I step in here with a Lincoln Navigator, people will start talking. Some of you say, ah, me, this kind of shady success, I'm not sure. We always want people to do things that keep us comfortable. The moment they begin to do things that challenge you, you try to find excuses. See, it's not every power you see that you look at, oh, forget about these people. Let me tell you something about my life. And I say this with all humility. I pray, I fast. But let me give you a bit of my personal life. Listen, every single day, every single day, I do not sleep until I take out time to study on leadership, on finance, on entrepreneurship. Are you listening to me? Many people just think I'm just standing and God anointed me. Get the anointing and go. Are you listening to me? I don't do that. In my laptop right now, I have Christ Embassy Pastoral Course. The whole series. This is not even something that is given anyhow. I made sure I got it. I'm listening to it. Oga Jordan brought certain books. I ordered it right now. There are four books that I have and I must read at least between now and the next two weeks. Be the Best by Matthew Ashimolo. 10 M's of Money by Matthew Ashimolo. Pastoring Without Tears by Sondia Delaja and the Jesus he never knew. These were new books. When he brought John Maxwell's Five Levels of Leadership, I saw it, I bought it. What are you doing to leave the level you are in now and rise to become a world champion? Many of you are waiting. The day my brother rises, he will remember me. And then you'll be angry because your brother will forget you when he gets there. Say this brother self. What is the benefit of an elder brother? Is it not to take some of us? Don't start doing something about your life. We are always waiting for somebody to pick us. When will you start carrying others? Every day. Are you listening to me? In my system right now, I was given Global Leadership Summit for last year. 2012 i have it and i've been listening to it some of the brilliant christian minds in leadership across the whole world when i listened to the first one i put my hand on my head i got down on my knees i felt ashamed of myself i said joshua selma what have you been doing i'm sure many of you are surprised now that's how that's how you'll be surprised me too i'll be surprised them too they are surprised when they listen to somebody else join the flow don't stand outside and be criticizing and talking because very soon all you will see is dust by champions who have passed you. Are you listening to me? What do you think preaching is? Just standing to talk? Do you understand that for you to be a good preacher there are some things you need to have? The psychology of communication? You need to know a lot of things? What do you think preaching is? Just holding a mic take? And you watch the way people will be sleeping the moment you are talking. Say after me, excellence. Very important. I need you to get this. When God told us we're starting Koinonia, we didn't just sit down while we're praying and we're fasting. What happened? We set up different departments and began to run trainings for different people. Most of the people you see today, they were not like that. A true leader does not maintain followers. He raises other leaders. We have a lot of preachers maintaining followers so that they alone will become the superstar because they are intimidated. They need to go and read books and attend courses and trainings. But they won't do it because they've surrounded themselves with mediocres that keep lying to them. 
your greatest enemy is the one who encourages you to remain where you are i don't care who that person is my father told me something years ago he said it's better to stay with a wise enemy than a foolish friend your friend loves you the way you are he won't hurt you because he values your relationship but your enemy will cause you to have to be smarter than him to survive i refuse to remain where i am i refuse there are things i do all the time let me hurry up i have so much i have so much to share to achieve excellence in life you need the following right To achieve excellence in life. I will not be small. In the name of Jesus Christ. I have found my way out of mediocrity in life. I'm telling you. I found my way. I know it. I've seen the door. I found my way out of average. I found myself out of mediocrity. No competition. I found my way to be the best. And be the greatest in life. This is not pride. This is the truth. This is what knowledge does to you. Intimidation is because you do not know your way out. For when you know what you have, and when you see that door that has been set before you, you will rise up like a champion. Oh, I'll never be a failure. This is not a confession. It's the truth. I found my way out of certain things forever. Satan notwithstanding. I will live my life as if Satan does not exist. There are some battles. I wrote a, I read a beautiful book, a gift that Dr. John Akbami gave me. Battles Satan cannot win. Powerful book. There are some battles that Satan has lost before he started. I believe. Hallelujah. Oh, Koinonia will keep rising. No, no. It's, no, this is not the issue of amen. The grace of God is there. And there are principles that have been tested through centuries and decades before Lord Lugard amalgamated Nigeria. It has worked. It won't break. They are irrefutable principles. This is not just the issue of prayer. So long as human beings have two legs and two hands, it will work. Kappa katabala. Thank you, Jesus. This is why I celebrate him all the time. You can stand tall through life and you just look at people and say, just hold on. This is just a matter of time. I won't go back. I can't go back to the way it used to be before your presence came and changed me. I won't go back. I can't go back to the way it used to be before your presence came and changed me in 2007 i was in port Harcourt. i was taking care of someone in the house where i was staying in the hospital ust the highest floor i was there suddenly i looked outside through the mirror and i was taken in the vision and i saw the international headquarters of eni i opened my mouth I said, is this on earth? I saw 38 flags, different nations of the world. But listen, I would have easily laid down and say, I saw it. I tell you the truth, I would have died without seeing it. Many of you have seen many things from the day you were born. How old are you now? Almost 40. Nothing has changed. Every time you are stuck in life, realize that it's a sign that what you know so far has ex is exhausted hallelujah dr lukoya said something one time i was listening and he said something very powerful he said that's what prof said he said you need a level of knowledge higher than you were when the problem came to conquer it are you listening to me in other words if you are in level eight and you find a problem in level eight you need knowledge higher than level eight to ever go in life there are many people who members they get to 100 members and they find out that with all the prayer and fasting they don't break that 100 member barrier they remain there 
So they just say, that's how God wants it. Or forget, oh, anytime you see crowd anywhere, look at the man, look at his eyes very well. Holy God knows what has happened. R immediately he's talking. Somebody will come with an anointing and set up something close to him. And you will see the same people who he has been trying and begging. See, brothers and sisters, anytime you are stuck in life, don't waste your time criticizing those going ahead. Your criticism will not stop them. Join the train and get out of your present predicaments. Hallelujah. Say, I'll never be a failure in life. Say, I'll never be small. Say it. Stop all this false humility. Say it. I refuse to be small in life. I'm telling you. I'm speaking to your spirit. Refuse it. Commit yourself to excellence. Be thorough. Be thorough. Be thorough. Don't leave your life to chance. Be thorough. What gift has God given you? The Bible says, Proverbs 31, verse 31. It says, many daughters have done well. But you, your excellence has brought you above them. He said, many daughters have done well. Many bankers have done well. Many media giants have done well. Many preachers have done well. Many businessmen have done well. He said, but you, excellence them all. See, let me tell you the truth. What you see in Koinonia today was my mindset of yesterday. You wait and see my mindset of today. What you are seeing today is not our mindset of today. This is old wine. I tell you the truth. This is old wine. This was the mindset we were preparing for when we were at the back of chapel. You hold on and see. For there, Let me tell you, God is alert and active watching over his word. He's watching obedient people. When God announced to us that this is a year of supernatural exploit, I knew that it's not enough to just say, thank you, Lord. I began to say, Lord, what are the things I need? It means I need a higher level of information. Oh boy, I wish I had time. All right, very quickly. I really wish I had time. But so, let's just get something. To achieve excellence in life, you need the following. Please make sure you are writing. Are you getting blessed tonight? Number one. When God wants to bring you into a life of excellence, the first thing you need is exposure. Right, exposure. Exposure. Let me tell you something about the power of exposure. Look up. If you are not exposed to something higher than what your mind knows, your mind can paint the portrait of a world of mediocrity and leave you there. Hallelujah. I was in secondary school. Our secondary school is not like your own. The one you went to. Where you ate yam and chicken. I never ate chicken in secondary school. Just one, Hanagama. I never ate chicken. Hallelujah. Not once. But, listen, but we were local champions around our local government. I mean, if we came to do debate with your school, you are, you are gone. Just start crying. Hallelujah. We had a debate with Jake's school. We came and caned them those times. Ah, it was a delight, some experience. Ladies looked at us, their ladies we were winning those times. But we remain at that level until we met another school. Exposure. Say after me, exposure. God will expose you to something. Listen. Exposure, those three, those three things. Number one, the power of exposure. One, it takes you beyond your present horizon. It shows you that there is something higher than what you have seen. Exposure challenges you. Exposure provokes you. Sometimes, exposure embarrasses you. And these are all tools that God uses to show you that there is a need to step up in life. Hallelujah. Exposure. 
For instance, you never knew. There's one song. Um, ah, I didn't know you will answer me this way. Hold on. That's a lovely song. I said that to say this. That I just remember the story. I went for administration some years ago and we're just trusting God. It was an awesome opportunity to get to, even if it's 10 people. And it was wonderful. And I went there and the people treated me so well. And then there it was a youth meeting then, but they are or God, quarter, quarter, their prophet or their bishop or something. He said he wanted to have dinner with me. So you know in my mind, what is dinner? What is dinner? What have you been eating as dinner? Two or something or this and that and that. So I went, was smart. When I got there and I, I saw what was there, I, I first didn't know what to do. Because I wanted to behave myself. I preached a powerful message. I didn't want to just disgrace and cancel everything that I was looking for everything that can keep up my reputation at that point. So I sat down. And I saw things I didn't know what they were. I saw a pack. I didn't know it was milk inside. You we only know milk in tin. Correct? You are laughing. Which one have you seen? So I didn't know it was liquid milk inside. And I behaved myself. I already made up my mind to be humble. So I was ready to ask questions. I had learned more than what you don't know. Just ask. Don't try to disgrace yourself the more. Ask. So I sat down and uh, I diplomatically cracked a joke and we started talking. And then I sat down there and I knew that I didn't know this thing. So I assumed that I was, the only thing I could do was to just behave like I was in the spirit. No, they won't ask you too many questions. So I was behaving. And I was watching what they were doing. I learned numerous lessons when I was watching. I was seeing everything. I would have fumbled, disgraced myself, disgraced ENI, left a bad reputation. When I saw that thing, what happened? Say after me, exposure. Say it, exposure. I said, Lord, thank you that it happened with just three or four people. When I went back, I sat down on my laptop. I browsed everything about table etiquette, kinds of food, how to behave, courses of meal and everything. Because I'm making way for the blessing. You know, the more you rise, the more you implicate yourself. People expect that you should have done certain homeworks. So they just... Some of you will get somewhere. You enter someone's house. You just see two toilets. You just think it's for you to choose anyone. You don't know what it's for. Don't pretend you didn't have it. Ask questions. Don't just, ah, ah, the type in our house is green. You don't know what it's for. Say after me, exposure. Don't be ashamed. Say exposure. Many of you, when you came into this school, ladies, you know what you used to wrap around yourself. You didn't know that the society was this sensitive. You just wrap everything and put your head around. But with time, you began to study other people. You say, ah, this is not good for me. And what happened? It was a secret exposure. You didn't tell anybody. The first day you cooked, you ate it alone. All your friends were saying, Kai, you tried, oh, this is nice. Everybody left you and your food there. For some of you from that time till now you have been living in deceit may god take you to see somebody's food that will provoke you not to rest till you go for catering in the mighty name of jesus christ say after me exposure prepare look up please i'm teaching you how to adopt the spirit of excellence you prepare Sir, let me have this cup. Why did they do this? How many of you know? Don't pretend. How many of you know why this was done? You've never cared to ask? Why? Did, when did they start doing this? 
Hallelujah. One day now, you will now say you want to be a virtuous lady. They'll say, sister, please come. There are some white people who just came from somewhere. And I hear you attend Koinonia. You, you are a disciplined lady. I mean, all the rest run around. Please help us. Just set the table and make sure you make everything. And you are sweating around. Set the table. Oh, God. The Bible says you are the one who will do it. Now I'm the one who is doing it. Thank you, sir. And you disgrace... You disgrace yourself and your family. Hallelujah. Many of you keep disgracing yourselves and disgracing people. You know why? Shame will never leave your life until you adopt the spirit of excellence. Hallelujah. You saw that a new design came out. You didn't ask all the questions how they wear it. You went, your money only reached for one part of the dressing. You carried it, wore it, and you were just coming around and smiling, looking at yourself, almost hitting yourself. Exposure. Say after me, exposure. It's not your fault. You came from the village. It's not your fault. It's not your fault. You have been lying as if you are living in Ikoi, Lagos. Humble yourself, embrace the exposure, and leave that realm. Leave that realm. They bring something for you. You don't know whether it's rice or it's chicken. And it's just keep quiet. You say, ah, but uh, they're stocky. They say, no, no, it's not stocky, it's, it's fish. You say, ah, I forgot. See me. Now, you are tongue talking. You are tongue talking. You are anointed. Do you think if I'm a director and I want to employ you, I will employ you to go and disgrace my company? No way. No way. And you say, somebody in your village. Whereas somebody who is not born again, not filled with the Holy Spirit, but pays the price to learn some things. You are going for a job interview. You are, you are dressing as if you are going to watch football. You are seeing everybody dressing smart. And you will just throw, say, the most important thing is the anointing I have. You enter the place, they say, why are you like this? This is how you want to become a staff? Are you aware this is a bank? Or this is an insurance company? You say, yes, I'm aware. You are, you are now getting arrogant because you think you are standing in front of Koinonia. You just imagine that it's your church. What is all this now? They've taught you positive confession. You are now shouting. The people say, please, this way. Walk out of this place. We don't like this kind of people. Walk out of this place. Hallelujah. Many of you do not want to train yourself. You don't want to build yourself. You have been taught that knowledge is inferior. The most important thing is just the anointing. I'm teaching you today that excellence will take you out of where you are into a world that you have never imagined. Please, let's hurry up. Thank you, Jesus. So you need what? Say, Lord, expose me. It could be an illumination in the world that you have never seen. And God exposes you. It could be a program. It could be whatever that opens you up. Exposure. This is a beautiful design by our decorations department. Appreciate them. Exposure. Because when you become a champion, you will know how to celebrate people. Appreciate them, please. <laughs> Hallelujah. You go for a meeting somewhere, they say, this is a professor. Everybody is clapping you. You are sitting down. They will say, sorry, please, can you? They will lead you outside as if they want to ask you a question and close the door. They are videotaping it. They want to show the world. that there, there is a way. See, listen. It's called the law of protocol. Protocol. Learn these things. Learn it. Learn it. Learn it. Don't say it does not matter. How old are you that you are saying it does not matter? Those who have been practicing it have lived by it. I hope you are receiving something tonight. I hope you are not just laughing. Because me, I'm serious about what I'm saying. It must not be a negative exposure. There are negative exposures. For instance, 
You see a lady who is a prostitute, dresses one kind, and she comes and you are there seated, and many guys are just coming. You say, all right, so this is what guys want. That's it. You go back. You know how Nigerian films are. The next thing they show, the villager girl just comes out. Say, how do I look? They say, this is it. And then the men begin to come. That's negative exposure. Positive exposure will inspire you. Are you listening to me? It won't kill your destiny. It will inspire you. Many of you are mentoring the lives of people who are not born again. They are not serious. They are not using principles that are consistent with the word of God. You will become like them and you will go to hell at the end. So stop that. Everything we are discussing has to be within the jurisdiction of the principles of the kingdom. So number one, you need exposure. Number two, exposure will create a need in you to rise higher. And this leads to the next point, determination. Because of the pain of the embarrassment you had, you will vow a vow that nobody needs to supervise. You will tell yourself it will never happen again. I was told one day that there are some guys, young guys that like claiming as in this kind. You know, young guys, when they see an elderly woman, they like claiming, look, I'm responsible. I can take care of your daughter. And so the, the car had a problem. And they asked them, the woman was inside and they wanted to jumpstart it. So the guys were pushing. The woman was tired. She said, ah, you poor young men, sorry, some of you enter and none of them could drive. And they had been behaving as in, we are ready to take care of your daughter. The woman said confidently, say, please enter and help me. You know, an old woman I've tried. And the guys were sweating there. Yeah. Oh boy, you shall be drive the other one. said, no, you go. If I ask you why can't why can't you drive? You say, because a car has not come. That's called mediocrity. Favor. Is when preparation meets opportunity. Sister, what can you cook? Jollof rice and boiled yam. What else? Nothing else. Who do you want to marry? Pastor. And kill him? And kill him? What if he fasts for seven days? That's what you plan to give him? And the guy has not come and said, Lord, I'm warning you now. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. Stop warning God. Get back. Create exposure and have a determination to move ahead. You have a restaurant, nobody has come to eat. You didn't ask why. You went for prayer. Now they prayed for you, nothing changed. Is the rice that is overnight by 1 p.m. You are still selling yesterday's rice. I will never come and eat in your restaurant. Whether you are a member of Koinonia, it doesn't matter what department you are functioning. I won't come and eat because I have only one body and I need to take care of it. If you are not ready to step up and then we say we are looking for caterers to cook for the ministers. You say I'm available. Available. Music artist. I was listening to a lady today. Top sticks. They call her. Ah. I put my hand on my head. Do you know her? How many of you know her? Yet you see I'm a drummer. Say I saw myself in the dream playing drum. Don't just let dreams deceive you. It takes action to bring what you have seen in the realm of the spirit to manifest in this realm. Am I challenging you? I watched this lady. I put my hand on my head. I wanted us to play it. It would have challenged you sisters. There is no excellent person who is not prosperous and fulfilled because it would defy barriers the same way some people are begging for jobs certain people see i learned a lesson in life i'm still coming back for banks banks i'm coming back for you in the future i applied for a loan in 2008 the banks did this they looked at me looked at me sized me and, and drove me out i said no problem a day will come it will be members of Koinonia that will have that bank. That, that, that was no Koinonia then. E and I. When they have it, I can walk in. There's what we call human capital, not land. You are the capital. 
So I said, if I don't have land, I will become the capital. Get knowledge. Get wisdom. Become equal to a nation. One man. Pastor Tunde Bakare was preaching. A bank abroad called him and they were begging him. They said, please collect a loan of $10 million. They were begging him. He said, what for? He said, please just take it. They said, because they are afraid of the recession. So they are looking for human beings that control influence. So that they will collect loans. So it can keep the bank stable. Are you listening to me? So people like Adeboy and the rest now. If he comes for loan, he is equal. Look at redeem. Can they make one bank? Or how many banks? So they will say, oh, please, Papa, collect money from us. Some of us are begging and say, give us money. Wait, wait. Uh, you have to present this and that. I said, no problem. It's not your fault. I don't have land, but I can have what? I said, I'm coming. This is the right thing you will do this thing for. This one that you do. I'm coming back. And I said, a day will come. On my table will be many offers from banks. I said, the problem is that we are blessed. Let me just pray for you. Is it not increase you want? Oh, it will happen. It will happen. It will happen. <laughs> knowledge, knowledge, knowledge. I found my way to the top. It will happen. It will happen. A day will come. I will ask. See, some of you one day will sit down. If you take what I'm saying serious. You say, mommy, do you want a bungalow? Matua Shimolo, hog bread in this area. The road you follow to come for Koinonia. He put bread on his head. Buy bread. Buy bread. He was hogging it. Some of our parents were laughing at him. Now, he's a world champion. What takes a man from a bread? He came to Zaria. He has a house. He still has a house there. When he came in, he said they should build the house. And in 30 days, they completed it. Plus polishing. Why wouldn't they build it when the money is there? Some of our parents have been building since 1991. Just four bedroom flat. Till today, we have not completed it. Everybody you thought was stopping the building has died, yet the building has not increased. Now, let's visit that word I wrote change. Change. Help us, Holy Spirit. Change. Remember the word? Let's visit it today. When you are determined to succeed, that means you are determined to change some things about your life. The difference between the rich and the poor is not money. It's their habits, their mindsets. The difference between those that God uses mightily and those who grumble and criticize and scrabble over others is their mindsets. And I want you to live where you are today and rise there's always backbiting there's nothing called front biting backbiting is for those who are far behind who are looking for an excuse for why they are where they are change listen there are a few things i've seen that happen to people every time you hear the word like this i wrote reactions that for on change number one refusal or denial or indifference about your present situation that means why you need to remain there there are many of us when you hear a word like this it will embarrass you it will sting your ego that's what is happening to many of us you are angry you wish you can flog me that's why you are not sitting here and now you are just saying oh god this guy why is he saying this thing now There are many people who hear messages like this and get angry. They don't know why they are angry. They think they are angry at the man of God. They are not angry at the man of God. It's a reaction that is compelling change. Because when you hear a message like that, it rattles you. And you can either be meek and broken. Or you can stand and give excuses. And say, okay, forget it, Jare. So the first thing people do when they are confronted with change is to refuse it. They try to give excuses. They try to be indifferent and say, well, I've had the time will tell who is right. 
Me, I will keep my prayer. Out. I won't let anybody preach any nonsense. Time will tell. <laughs> you better repent now. You don't need to wait till the future. Just look. Look at two people. One who looks like you and one who looks like what you are preaching. Project them and see what is happening to their lives. Experience. People say it's the best teacher, but it must not be your experience. Be wise enough and look at other people. For instance, our family members. I know families that conduct vigils every Thursday and Friday in their house. They wake everybody. Some of your families do that. The moment you see people waking, know that your father is under pressure. Something is wrong. Wake up and come out. We have a problem and you are sleeping there. Come out. And you are praying and you are sleeping. You are saying, Lord, is this really the solution to this problem? Because your father cannot sleep. You will sleep too. Growing up, when my father is annoyed, everybody must partake of that annoyance directly. For something very small like keeping this Bible here, you say, is this where it's supposed to be? You know that the real thing is not the Bible. There's, it's a cumulative of something. You watch your friend on news, you just start getting angry and see all these people. They now pretend as if they don't know us. The truth is he has forgotten about you. Let me just tell you the truth. Because they don't look back. Leaders look forward. So if you ever want people to remember you, come forward. Many of you are there angry. They don't remember us. Uh -uh. You want them to just turn back like that? So that they will fail and then you say, Hey, I knew it wouldn't last. That's indifference. If it works well, you say, I knew. It's just that I didn't say it. If it fails, you say, Shebi, I, I told you I'd be indifference. After you refuse, then it leads to anger and embarrassment. That's the second stage. Because right now you are, that anger and embarrassment is a confrontation in your heart. You are knowing, you are knowing right now that this is true. I need to change. So you are either getting angry at the vessel or you are getting angry at your situation. Number three, the moment you finally settle it, that where I am, is not good enough. What happens? The third thing is you begin to negotiate for cheap routes so that you escape fast, so that people will not know. Cheap routes. Unfortunately, there are no cheap routes in life. It's only in advertisement. I have one, this thing on my phone. It said marriage instant no dues. So he wrote, he said there's no marriage instant no dues. It's in America they do that. Oh, I love you. You love me. Let's marry. They just get one priest from somewhere. Just comes out from somewhere and just join the people. Two weeks later, you look at them and say, How are you? Say, I'm not doing it again. He doesn't love me. Oh. I don't love you. What, did, what were you thinking? What were you thinking? When your mother was getting married in the village, she knew she was in for it. She was determined to make it work. We are not touching those areas now. Ah, one day we'll talk about it. You've not heard me preach about it for a long time. I went to Delta and when they were picking me for the state conference from my hotel room, the two guys were arguing. They said, sir, want to find out your opinion about marriage. I said, ah, don't start. Because I said, you people don't want to know my opinion. My opinion about many things is always causing trouble. So, a day will come, we'll share that one. Praise God. I'm sure that day, some of you will just stand up and say, just walk away. <laughs> uh, negotiating for cheap alternatives. Cheap alternatives. If that does not work, then you come to terms with the fact that change is inevitable. In other words, you cannot hide it. You may cry about it. You may feel embarrassed about it. But you have to change. At that point, it will bring you to a point where you are humble. And you will receive and say, okay, I'm wrong. I need to change. Listen, do you know how hard it is for people to accept change in their lives? Because change means you have to admit that what you know is not enough. That's why humility is the fastest tool to receive change. Once you are humble, you can embrace change. 
Hallelujah. Have you seen someone in class who bragged about one test? The guy bragged and said, if I don't pass, change my name. And then maybe it's just one question. So you either get 10 over 10 or 0. And they were calling the names of those who are 10 over 10 and his name was not there. And then the guy just sat down. Everybody's looking at him. And the guy is trying to manage multiple pressures, not knowing what to do. And then they say, who can help us solve it? And then the guy wants to quickly stand up and go and solve it. He said, oh, I know the right thing. And when he stands up, he says, no, 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 no. You got zero. Please sit down. They will keep embarrassing you till you come to a point where you say, all right. I am a brilliant student, but I didn't get this right. See, have meekness and humility. It will help you embrace change. Are you listening to me? Meekness and what? Humility. There are people today in the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. God has opened them up to a revelation. But changing it may mean changing the ideology of the ministry. They would rather remain like that than to contend for truth. Is that true? Some of your churches are like that. The founders, the overseers, whoever, God has given them encounters and are saying this gospel you are preaching, you need to change it. Something is wrong. And they look at the reputation they have built for decades and say, Kai, if I change this thing now, it's as good as dying. Hallelujah. Or your father beats your mother. Two of them do and go and they go to church. And then a man of God with big mouth like me comes and says, there are men in this place. You beat your wife this morning before coming. And he said, to them, say, turn to your wife and say, I'm sorry. And you see your father struggling with change, battling with change, doing suddenly like he's sending a text message. Or God, turn to your wife and say, I'm sorry. Just battling. That's why I taught you these virtues last week. I'm sorry. Remember, please. What else? Thank you. You came for koinonia and you matched somebody. The person says, sister, you matched me. You just turn and look at him and say, is it where they keep Bibles? Why don't you change? Change is very hard. This is what kept, this is what kept Nitel out of the way. If your father works in Nitel, I'm sorry. But this is what took them out. The ability to embrace change will always keep you in season. Hallelujah. Many people have refused to change. And now they are victims. Let's hurry up. Number three. All those things I've said are number two. To achieve excellence in life. One, you need exposure. Two, determination to succeed. That's where we spoke about change. Number three. Set goals. Set goals. On what you want to become like. Set a high standard. If you tell me you want to become excellence, I'll say like who or what. Give me a reference. You must have a reference. A reference is someone or something that have become close or equal to what you want to become like. You must have somebody or somewhere you are looking up to. Set a very high standard. Set a clear standard. I want to be an entrepreneur. What kind? Like who? Call the name of one person who can give us a portrait of what you want to become like. Those in the world know that. Ask them who is your role model. They just say Timaya. Ask a small child. I mean, at least they have an idea. You know what that means? Go to their rooms and all you see is Timaya's tapes and everything because they want to follow the principles he followed to get there. Ask believers. You say you are an artist. Say wonderful. So tell me three people that really inspire you that you want to become like. Say me, oh, the way I do my things, even me, I'm not sure. We just keep moving. You will never, never become the kind of figure that you are seeing. I assure you. I assure you. Unfortunately, and I must say this now, many pastors have taught people that if I am your pastor or I am your spiritual father, I'm the only one you should listen to. Don't listen to anybody. Don't take anybody. Question. You want to become a media giant. Your pastor is only a preacher. How is he going to mentor you into that? He can guide you. He can instruct you. He can advise you. But you need to find a mentor along the area that God is taking you to. 
This is the message they don't preach in church. Because people always think, oh, if you are my son or you are my daughter, it means your offering is coming to me alone. Get that junk out of the church. That's what is keeping people where they are. He looks popular, but he did not come from God. He doesn't produce successful people. Hmm. You want to own an airline. Like which one? You don't know. I assure you, you won't arrive. I watched one cartoon growing up called Alice in Wonderland. Fantasies that happen in one Wonderland. That's how many people are living. <laughs> you ask them, they, start, they even close their eyes when they are telling you. You won't get there. Look at me. I want to ask two people randomly. Brother, stand up. You, stand up. What do you want to become in life? Don't shout me. Come and tell me. Don't, don't need to tell everybody none of their business. All right. This is why you are here. May God bless you for your honesty. Are you seeing that? He said an answer that many of you will not have courage to say. Because you sit down and act like you know. How about you, sir? Okay. I want to be a solution. To you. you want to be a solution to the world? Ick. No, no. Don't laugh. Hold on. This is a school. You want to be a solution to the world. That's wonderful. What solution? A medical doctor is a solution. A carpenter is a solution. A mechanic is a solution. A banker is a solution. In what area? Biochemistry. In biochemistry. So you want to take that field. God bless you. You see now that what you see what you are receiving in this place, guidance. So go and find a God-fearing biochemist. Are you listening to me? How do you get that? Go and Google it. Christian professional biochemists look for them you find a particular biochemist he has probably written books he probably has videos on YouTube go to engineering faculty in the night pay the price and download it and start listening you will get their mindsets before you know it you will rise above ABU rise above Zaria in my mind I've left Zaria in my mind I've left Nigeria and I, I never will be limited with this environment Hallelujah. Are you learning something now? So, write it. Find somebody. Say, who do you want to become? Say, an apostle. Like who? What, is it God to, what did God tell you? You are not clear. Go back. Stop going out. Go back to the secret place. There are questions to ask. But you left an incomplete session and you got up and you are running. There are many ministries today. Ask me what every time we hold leadership meetings. Whether ministers meeting. Whether... um um. HODs or ESCOs or whatever the f we discuss it I tell them why this ministry exists in one sentence I can tell you what we are here to do periodically I remind all the leaders we are not existing to do everything there are many preachers go and ask them why did you start your church say well an angel appeared it was on the 20th why did you start your church Say the angel told me, he said, now this day I have commissioned. Why did you start your church? Little wonder people are committed in your church. They come and go because there is no definition of vision. They don't know what they are going to become. Why did you start your church? Now you started a prayer group. Even if it started supernaturally, eventually you go and ask God. He said, now Lord, people are coming in this prayer group. Where are we going to? You are just praying with a sister. Praying with a sister. Where are you going to? Do you like her? Are you starting the ministry together? Are you prayer partners? Vision. Define it. We'll be praying every day. And the sister is saying, so what's the next instruction God is giving? You are saying, let's just keep praying. Where are you going? Nobody follows a leader that does not have conviction and where you are going. I assure you. So set goals. Set goals. In the area of finances, there are people that I model their lives. In the area of ministry, there are people I model their lives. In the area of leadership, there are people I plan to be higher. When you go to my place, you see, above my television, I put my picture there. People think it's just for entertainment. No. It's prophetic. Because I'm seeing it, I'm saying, whatever I see on this television, the hand of God will take me above it. 
and then you see books there some of you when we get there it's just dreams you write wishes useless wishes that may never come to pass the only goal you have is the kind of man you want to marry that's good but that's not enough you even draw the person his eyelashes must be wide and rich here apply that same principle for your life and destiny or the brother she must be this me i won't take anything joshua selman has taught us excellence i won't take anything then you too you better work to match the excellence you want there are many brothers here you want a beautiful sister every time you come you just look at her just turn worship team you are just looking you are not organized you are not well behaved you are not well cultured you are not disciplined you have no vision you are not doing anything about your life they say who do you want one day you even meet your friend and say Guy, i've been thinking about something you better stop thinking you better stop thinking quick and, and get to what you are doing better stop thinking don't punish your mind for nothing stop thinking first things first clarity say after me i receive grace to set definite goals for my life write a quick assignment you do write three go and look for three people that represent the areas they must be believers they must be believers three people that give a picture of what you know god wants you to do whether in ministry not very high raise your standard high if you want to own a tv ministry like which one for instance you can say like tbn like god tv like kicc for instance you say god has told me this my hand will count money there's one song you see this my hand you many people even count it you go count dollars you would dance that thing and never count any dollar it's wonderful do the motions of the church motivate yourself but after that go and sit down you didn't even mention naira mention dollars hallelujah set a standard when i look at ministry there are people that inspire me i read their books it doesn't mean you will receive everything there will be excesses here and there in their lives jump all those things and concentrate on what you can get are you listening to me there are many people whose mindsets in certain areas i don't quite agree with stop criticizing just get what you can get and go hallelujah set goals so that you can know when you set goals you must begin to put pressure on yourself to achieve those goals don't just set blind goals set goals there are ministries that we as a ministry i've, I've taught i carried the heads of department the ministers and we went to koza abuja why because i love and i respect their excellence do you know it takes a lot of humility to do that because i'm not failing in ministry i know i'm anointed but you must humble yourself i'm saying it openly because it's not a thing to hide there are many ministers that listen to my messages and just stand up and pretend they i know it i see it sometimes in visions see celebrate greatness when you enter its presence there are people who bless my life i don't hide it And we took all the leaders and we went to Koza. We went in the morning, we sat down there. Our head of department of different departments went to their head of departments and they were learning. Don't ask questions why we are excellent. And this is not, this is old wine. I'm telling you, this is old wine. You wait and see what God is doing. They have adopted principles. For instance, I know that Ilorin and Ibadan is the place of music people. Is that true? Some of you musicians don't even know. 
you think is Isamaru. That's the problem. Come. He was over at my place today and I was doing discussions with him. It was him that told me about the lady. How many of you like his singing? Alluring people again. You see that? And I was, I was asking him a question. I said, tell me about the music in Ilori. And he said, ah, the people there, most of them like money, 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 but they are excellent. They are competent. I said, ah. I said, tell me more. And I was just listening. He said, tell me more. I said, all right, God bless you. Every time I challenge the decorations department, they don't just bring some of these designs off heart. They sit down and look at certain things. The protocol, almost every department. And if you're a head of department here and you don't have an idea of any ministry that does your department and an idea of a picture, it means you are misleading your people. You do anything you want to do today. You do, thank God there are ministers there to supervise you. When you are going out, of course, it's our job to bring you back. Question, who inspires you? Yourself. That's why you are still where you are. You are the only one who inspires yourself. You don't have any figure that inspires you. Out of the many mentors in my life, my greatest mentor is Jesus Christ. And I, no, no, no. I know many of you will not. Jesus inspires me. Boy, when I study the Bible, sometimes I just put it on my head. I say, Baba Jesus. I just laugh. I mean, this guy was something else. He inspires me. Who inspires you? Show me the person that inspires you and I'll tell you why you are in your life. For many of us, we are surrounded by people who are failures in life. It doesn't mean you should hate them, but they cannot be your role models. It's out of pity many of us look up to some people. I won't let a failure inspire me. I won't criticize him. I will love him. But I know he will not help me to get where I want to go to. There are many of you who are friends with people who don't inspire you. It's just out of pity. We have been there since secondary school. You want to read. After you read for two hours, you say, I beg, Jare, Jesus is coming soon. You say, not true. You just close your book. And you keep getting zeros, 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 zeros. And you'll be wondering, zeros. The best student in your class is reading. You go and sleep and come back and still see the person reading. Because every time he's tired, he sees, did you have that kind of thing in secondary school where you have the best two students when somebody's tired he looks at the person who took first last semester see i'm not going anywhere we must read together provoke one another i'm not teaching you to have a competitive spirit but you must who challenges you i don't mean makes you envious challenges you i taught the worship team one time i told them i said acknowledge those who are better than you hallelujah acknowledge it when you look and say selena can hold this camera if i hold this camera and you watch the video you will stone me hallelujah i wasn't trained to do it when they were being trained i was doing something else so i'm not that competent so if i come and see selena and say oh, what well, is it not this simple thing mm -mm. celebrate greatness when you see it hallelujah you will now see this worship people and say ah, ah. I thought this lady is a new lady. She came, ah, ah, worship team have accepted her. They are trying, no? why didn't they take you? You see, people have this negative, critical spirit. Hallelujah. Why are the protocol people standing and wearing white? Can't they just dress anyhow? Don't communicate your frustrations looking at things around. Calm down, get the word and change. Let me tell you something. 95% of people who criticize only criticize because they desire to be in that position that they are criticizing. It's a bad spirit in Nigeria. They've been insulting good luck Jonathan and they've been doing a lot of things. People have been swearing, if we see you, kill. he has been in Meduguri and Yola for the past two days. Nobody did anything. Everybody was shouting, hey, the same people. What are we saying? Who is deceiving who? Four, pay the price for new information. You need new information to rise to a new level. You need new information. 
what you have is good but it's not enough hear me you are a book writer you wrote your book is only you and your family members that know that tells you that your information is insufficient you launched it in your church they piled the book for you there now you are giving it as donation because nobody will buy it you were not ready you just followed one foolish motivation that you cannot explain and wrote books that don't have head and sense later on after two years you read them and saw nonsense that you wrote principles that don't work they are not even work the best time to begin to bring people into some things is when you become the epistle of your message at that point nobody can contend it if i tell you that spitting on people's face is bringing miracles i tell you the truth if i can prove it you will be surprised to see how people will believe it there are many people talking things they cannot prove i learned this early enough so i made sure that i'm the guinea pig there are many things today I'm saying. You people are believing it only because you have seen we have become epistles of some of these things to a measure. Otherwise, you will not believe it. Pay the price for new information. Get books. Get books. The Bible says, buy the truth. Borrow vessels. You may not borrow oil, but you can borrow vessels. Get books. Oh God, Jordan is here. There are books outside, I believe. Buy them. Buy books. Study. Go for knowledge. Respect knowledge. Respect knowledge. Intellect is not everything. But I'm telling you, respect the power of a transformed mind. Respect knowledge. Don't criticize it. Respect knowledge. Go for new information. Meet people who know. Humble yourself. Get tapes. Koinonia messages are here. Many of you have been suffering certain things that the solution has been preached in these messages. Listen to it. Again and again. Sit down with books and tapes. And challenge yourself that you are going to change your life. Not just sermons. Books by people who have proven track record. Number five. Apply these principles diligently. Apply them. The end of every knowledge is application. Whatever you do not apply cannot help you. I'm telling you this. Many of us know so many things. But we refuse to apply them. The most dangerous thing that can happen to a man is to have knowledge without application. There are many people holding all kinds of seminars around Nigeria. Success motivation. And you see the person comes rickety, not motivated, bad, terrible, battered, and he just drops and says, there are three Ds. Determination, dedication, diligence. Look at the person who is talking. Say you must be determined. This guy is weary already. There were four people who came. He thought hundred people would come. Say determination, diligence. And the person is already weary. Go back to your secret place. Apply the new information diligently. Number six. Be disciplined and consistent in practicing the new principles. Many people lack discipline. It takes discipline to keep practicing these principles. Even if the result is not showing now. You have been tightened. The result is not showing now. You've been reading books. That continue. Continue. Don't stop. Pastor Chris will say, keep saying it. Don't stop talking it. Let me add to it. Keep doing it. Don't stop doing it. No matter what the, you are praying every day, you are studying your Bible, you are reading books on leadership, you are fine-tuning, you believe that you are going to have one of the biggest catering firm in Nigeria. Now you have certain people who are some of the top caterers. You are following them and you are taking it diligent. You are practicing some principles. It looks like it's not working. Continue. Give yourself wholly to them. I promise you, 
opportunity will come and your preparation will more than pay for it. Hallelujah. Be consistent. Be disciplined. Many of us are not disciplined. It takes discipline to maintain a consistent prayer life. It takes discipline to maintain a consistent word life. Because sometimes you are tired. Sometimes when is my time to follow materials on leadership and all of these things, I'm tired. I'm really tired. Physically exhausted. I may have spent the whole day counseling. But sometimes when I lie down, I remember that I have people to lead. I think about you and it inspires me. I get up. Sometimes I literally crawl. I'm telling you with my knees. I put on my laptop. I said, eyes, you can sleep, but my head stay awake and I keep following it. I just get a drink or something and I force myself. Listen, you must let your body know it's not in control of your destiny. Be consistent. Be disciplined. It's your time to study. You are studying a book. Your friend says, come. There's one, there's one uh, powerful program. Or one man of God has come to town. Wonderful. As great as that is, ask yourself a question. Is the program you are going to, going to help you to achieve your vision? If it will not, you better sit down and continue doing what you are doing. Be consistent. Say, I receive grace to be disciplined. Discipline is doing the same thing, whether the condition is favorable or not. That's discipline. Force yourself. Constrain yourself. My body is already used to me. I can come back from a trip. When I come back from a trip, I know that it's time to do some things. I'm tired and I'm exhausted. I rest though. Don't get me wrong. I have days that I pay that debt, but I pay it at the right time. When I need to do something, my body is not going to stop me. There are many of you, you have slept away your destiny. You have slept away a realm that you would have got to. You sleep as if it's a demonic attack. The moment you hold the book, you are drowsy. But when you are gisting, when you are lying, have a Number eight. Never give up. Never give up. We are going to pray right now. Never give up. Never. No matter what happens. No matter what happens. Champions are those who survive what others cannot survive. Never give up. Say after me, I will never give up. Never give up. I am imparting this word in someone's spirit tonight. Never tonight, friends, I love you too much to lie to you. I won't deceive you. We will take a few minutes and truly address. And I said, Lord, all this sin, sin, you know, the whole thing. God told me that uh -uh, it's not just my mess is there, but there are some sins. The Bible says the sin that easily besets us. Hebrews 12, verse 1. It says, seeing then that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. He said, let us lay aside every weight and the sin. That means it's specific. You know it. The sin that easily besets us. And then we will run with perseverance. The race that is set before us. Are you listening to me? There are many people who want to receive from God. And I want you to get the best of God. But let me tell you something. If sin is at work in your life, it will keep empowering demons. Because of the influence of God's power in this territory, they may seem to leave you for a while, but they will gather their kind and return back. Because if that sin issue is not addressed, the Bible calls it the sin that easily besets us. Hallelujah. And the Lord began to show me again. Hallelujah. That scripture, Second Chronicles 7 verse 14. Popular scripture. But many people do not see the life in it. He said, if my people. So the first statement is, they are my people, correct? If my people, who are what? Called by my name. But it does not mean they will be free automatically. They are my people. They are called by my name. He said, they shall do what? Humble themselves. That's the first thing you need to do tonight. 
whoever you are pride is one thing that kills people they feel they don't need a miracle they do not want to subject themselves to god laws of receiving miracles if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and then do what Turn. this is what the church does not want we want to receive miracles and return back to our life so don't talk to me about my life just heal me and let me go just pray for me let financial doors be open let me just be a millionaire let me just be blessed let me build a house let my parents buy the car wonderful let me get the job let me be promoted he said but shall turn from what their wicked ways there must be a turning god says i will be watching until you turn the strength of forgiveness is if there is repentance if there is no repentance forgiveness does not have value and turn from their wicked ways he said then will i hear from heaven he said and i will forgive their sins and do what and heal their land There are four major sins that the Bible puts and that God revealed to me while praying for this meeting that easily beset men. And we're going to consider them very quickly because I want us to just enjoy what God is going to do today. Number one, number one is what the Bible calls immorality. Hallelujah. Immorality is not just sex. Are you listening to me? So don't you sit that there and say, thank God I'm not part. Just keep quiet and let me land. Immorality is not just sex. Hallelujah. Immorality. A state of lust for anything that is not any, the, the cravings of the flesh. Immorality a sin that doth easily beset a lot of people that's why they see that they cannot walk in perpetual miracles you can pray you can fast you can jump but i'm telling you if you do not address the issue of immorality in your life forget about walking in authentic power you may not like the message tonight but god brought you to listen hallelujah because what we men of god do is that as soon as members come we just come and we tell people oh receive take the power of god do this no 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 you must address the life of the people so that the miraculous will be a blessing to them say amen, amen. immorality we must be able to open up ourselves and flog out that issue and close doors listen did you know that the greatest expression of intimacy between a man and a woman is sex correct that's the same way when the spirit of immorality comes upon you it seeks partnership with your human spirit and will never allow you to walk in true righteousness and holiness I want you not only to be blessed tonight but to receive the authentic power of the Holy Spirit if you came here to hear the truth and to be blessed I'm telling you the truth the sin that doth easily beset us number two idolatry one great sin that easily besets people you know what idolatry is? Idolatry is not just building an image. Idolatry is putting your hope, your trust, and your confidence in any other thing above God. Any other thing. My uncle, my auntie, my this, my that. The Bible says, Woe unto any man he that puts his strength in a man. This is the reason why many people cannot receive from God. Every time God says, I want to bless you, your mind is going to one uncle. 
And the truth is, you think you are trusting God. You only remember that your uncle said he will bless you. So when the prophetic word is coming, you are see, you are already calculating. Who told you God needs your uncle to bless you? Are you listening to me? Idolatry. Can you take away every support and say, Lord, you have made a way for men in the wilderness. You have called strangers to bless people. I take my eyes. I've said it. In life and in death, I put my strength in no man aside from God. Whatever God cannot do for me, let it not be done. Wherever God cannot take me, I will not go. Are you listening to me? You must challenge yourself. Idolatry. Many people put their whole strength in a man of God. Now I know the Bible says, believe in the Lord and you shall be established. You shall be established. Believe his prophet and you shall prosper. You must also believe the vessel that God is going to use. But not to come and begin to worship a man because you are looking for miracles. Are you listening to me? There are lots of believers who are caught up in that kind of satanism. Yes, God uses vessels. God is using me right now to bless you. And shortly you'll be experiencing higher levels of his grace and anointing in this place. But I want you to know that your strength and your confidence, this is why it is always our desire to exalt Jesus Christ. We have no business trying to exalt a man. Joshua Selman, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. The one who is coming to perform miracles. Let me tell you something. I have confidence and I believe God will use me to bless you. It's not pride. It's the truth. He has anointed us. Jesus said the spirit of the Lord is upon me. He didn't say the spirit of the Lord is in heaven. He said it's upon me. So there is a place of confidence. But not to bring you to a point where you must worship me. Because I am the absolute custodian of the power of the spirit. That's witchcraft. It's idolatry. Hallelujah. So for those of you who came here to see the great man, Joshua Selman, you've had me on tape. This is the man. Nothing much about me. Except for the fact that I'm available for him to use me. Are you listening to me? There is only one name that should be exalted. Jesus. Not God. Jesus. God can mean anything to people. A bottle of minerals. One stone somewhere in your village. But when you say Jesus, the Bible says he's the express image of the Father. Hallelujah. So every miracle that you will see in this place is the Lord walking through willing vessels to bring miracles for people. Hallelujah. That's why we rejoice and we are confident. We won't do that false humility to lie that we are not anointed. I'm anointed. It's an election by grace. It's not pride. It's the truth. The ministers are anointed. However, we will not forget the anointed is only an usher. Christ is the one we are leading men to. So if tonight's miracle does not direct people to Jesus Christ, we ended up creating a platform of witchcraft where we become the king of kings over the lives of people. Hallelujah. Number three, very quickly. Unbelief. Unbelief. The Bible says in Hebrews, there's no time. It said they did not enter their rest because of unbelief. There, there, there are certain Christians who are so cynical. Listen to me. And many of you need to be delivered from that spirit. Hallelujah. You never believe anything that is God. Someone says, ah, I had a fractured leg. It's just fixed now. And you are just saying, hey, oh, they should allow me to come and stand and check. All these stories we are doing. How are we sure that the person, you see, that cynical spirit is what the Bible calls unbelief. Hallelujah. So, when people are opening themselves and receiving you're just standing there and wondering and saying, wow, interesting. 
How are we sure this week? How are we sure? How are we sure? That's just the language. Satanic and demonic. Hallelujah. Say I'm a believer. Tonight, don't just watch others. And say this thing. Let me look first. If two people get healed, that's when I'll be sure. Or my friend that I came with. Let's see now. If you don't get blessed, you can't come and beat us. Did we collect money from you? We will enjoy the blessings of God and move. Whether or not you don't believe that God is at work, look at the people inside and outside. Their joy unto God will trample your unbelief. But I know there is a God who heals, who delivers, who can change the stories of men. The fourth sin that easily besets men is what the Bible calls a lying tongue. A lying tongue. Book of Proverbs, the Bible says six things the Lord does hate. Seven, an abomination to him. The second in that list is a lying tongue. Let me tell you what a lying tongue is. A lying tongue is not just saying, ah, Reuben is wearing kaftan, where he's wearing suit. Are you listening to me? A lying tongue is that tongue that is not consistent with the truth of God's word. That's what the Bible calls a lying tongue. It's not just negating or saying things that did not happen. So if God says you are blessed and you refuse, you are a liar because God cannot lie. You get my point now? A lying tongue. Many of us allow our tongues to profess and to speak things that are not consistent with the word of God. God says you are healed. You are there celebrating sickness. God says you are blessed. Hallelujah. And now we think it doesn't matter. But the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. It said, life and death are where? In the power of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. That means you will eventually eat the fruit of whatever you are sowing. I refuse to have a lying tongue. That's why I believe he will bless people tonight. I dare not say he will not bless. We are going to pray in the next five minutes and say, Lord, whatever will not let me go back with a great miracle tonight, take it away from my life. No, no, no. We don't bow our heads in this place. Stand up on your feet. We are going to pray. Now is not the time to sleep. Please rise up and pray. Inside and outside, in one minute, I'd like you to pray. Say, Lord, I know that your hands are not too short. I cried my life unto God. I said, Lord, tonight, as you bless men, do not forget me. As you change the stories of men, as you have always done, do not forget me. Go ahead and pray and say, Lord, my life is free from immorality. My life is free from a lying tongue. My life is free from idolatry. Tonight, my eyes are lifted up to you. Come on, pray. He's here tonight to bless us. I have made you too small in my eyes, oh Lord, forgive me, and I have believed in the lie that you are unable to help. Who told you God cannot help you? But now. Oh Lord, I see my wrong. Fill my heart and 
show yourself strong and in my heart and in my heart and with my soul Sure you're singing it from your heart, inside and outside. Be magnified. Be magnified. Oh Lord. Magnified, oh Lord. You are highly exalted. tell the Lord what you want him to do in your life tonight say it so that when it happens you will know he did it don't keep quiet say Lord change my story deliver my family tonight Hallelujah. 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 The devil is a liar. Are you listening to me? The Bible says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Spirit of the Sovereign Lord, come and make. Your presence, Lord, with me, the glory of the Lord. Lord, let the heavens be open. I command the miracle angels, the angels of deliverance, across the land and bread of this building. Everyone who is standing in this place, let him be under the influence of the power. Yeah. I'm going to rebuke Satan and the works of darkness over people and families. Listen, it's time for any devil that is standing your way and that of your family to go. For the enemy has done this. And God has so highly exalted him. Lift your hands. As I rebuke the works of darkness, as the power of God comes upon you, let me help them in front. Thou devil of darkness, it's time to go. Let God's people go. Go, go, go. Let the power of God fall, fall. I command demons. Powers of darkness, for you cannot stand in the name that is above every other name. Go, or shall spring them outside that devil. Let God's people go, those outside, lift your hands. The power of God.
God set men free set men free set men free Atalaka pato toto bakata Randa tabosa you're going to shout Jesus once and the power of God devils will leave they must go tonight they must go are you ready especially outside the power of God will fall like rain shout Jesus Jesus let the angels, the angels of God are moving with a sword in this place. The angels of God are moving with a sword. Chains be broken. Chains be broken. Chains be broken by the fire of the Holy Ghost. By the fire of the Holy Ghost. By the fire of the Holy Ghost, by the fire of the Holy Ghost, no devil can stand, no devil can stand, no devil can stand. I tell you, no devil Outside, the angel of the Lord is moving with a sword. A mighty angel, a mighty angel, a mighty angel outside. A mighty angel, mighty angels, mighty angels, mighty angels. I don't know why angels are moving outside, but the Lord shows me angels, mighty angels, the northern army of the Lord's eye moving in power. I'm of Satan. I'm of over the destinies of God's people. Outside, an angel of the Lord's presence. We magnify your name. We magnify your name. Like fire. I see a whole roll outside. Like fire. A whole roll outside. Like fire. It's falling like rain. Like fire. No devil can stand. No devil can stand. This is a place for emancipation. God's people will go free. And no devil, no power in hell will stand the fire power. Who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord? And who shall stand in his holy place? He that has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul unto vanity. At the back, this row, at the back, for you shall not stand over God's people. The fire of God upon one person at the back, you will not stand it. It comes like rain with power of 
upon you. Every devil over God's people, those of you in front, at the count of three, I command every devil, go, go, one, two, three, out, 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 by the fire of the Holy Ghost, let them go free. Every delay, every habit, every spirit, out of witchcraft, every enchantment. My sister, be free now. That devil, let her go free by the fire power of the Holy Ghost. Let her go. 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 Be free. That devil for the children shall not suffer the iniquity of the fathers. Hallelujah. For you cannot stand the light of God. This lady has been tormented. Satan, out of her now. In the name of Jesus, be free. The heavens are open. God's power is touching everybody, not just those in front. Come out of him now. Come out of him. Come out of him. By the power of the Holy Ghost. She's free now. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Now, be free. Come out of her. The fire of the Holy Ghost upon you. That fire power upon you. That fire power in the name of Jesus. Let it rain. Let it rain. Open the floodgates. I see a woman I see a woman who came with a child a woman who came with a I'm seeing a small boy where is the woman inside or outside what's wrong with the child his body is hot his body is hot can you lose him can you hold him if you are deaf Hear me inside and outside. If you are deaf, whether in one ear or both ears, if you brought someone who is deaf, put your hands in the ear that is not working. It's time for deaf people to be healed now. Or even if you are hearing, I see two people. You you are hearing, but it's not clear because it looks like there's water. You literally feel like water is going to go now. For one of you, water will literally come out. Katapato kopaya. Deaf ears, hear ye the word of the Lord. Ephata, be opened in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Deaf ears, make sure you check yourself. We'll take some testimonies. Bring this lady.
tonight is your night of deliverance. Tonight is your night of deliverance. Hallelujah. Please, I need someone with a mic. What is wrong with the child, madam? Just I came back from the work and I had the body of the baby is hot. And I leave him nothing nothing to You him. believe God will set this boy yes, free I, right now? Yes. Oh, there are miracles. Yes, Listen, there are miracles happening. Now. Once you are under the influence of his presence, God is changing lives, opening doors. name of the Lord Jesus I set you free the power of God is going through his body that's what is making him uncomfortable in the name of Jesus be free now be free now I command your temperature to go down your son is free. Take. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Someone came. I don't know what it is that has to do with your leg. Is it pain in your joints or something around your leg? There's someone you came. You are not a regular worshiper here. Who is that person? The Lord is showing me someone like that with that case. Please, quickly, quickly, quickly. Once we call your case, we don't want to keep people so long here. Once we call your case, please run out quickly. Please. What's wrong with you? Anytime I walk, it always pains me. Anytime you walk, it always pains you. Where? How long has it been? Since when I was small. Bring a chair for me, please, quickly. What's wrong with you? It's paining you. Yeah. How about you? Please bring three chairs quickly, quickly. Let's save time. Just turn it. No, no, no. Turn it. God is healing heart conditions now. God is healing heart conditions. Hold on. There's someone... You have abnormal, what do they call it, medical students, help me. Heartbeat, irregular heartbeat. Irregular heartbeat. You? Okay, come. But there's another lady I'm seeing, she's taller than you. Irregular heartbeat. Sometimes it beats, you even have to use your mouth. It's a very serious condition. Who is that? Please come quickly. Lord, we release now. The name of Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit. What's wrong? Come, bring her. All right. Can I see your legs? Don't worry. I'm not saying she pull up. Just, just remove your shoes, can you? Now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now please watch your screen inside and outside. Watch your screen. Can you see that if you are looking very well, can you see that one of these legs is shorter than the other? Can you see it please? Now watch what the power of God will do. Sister, look at me. Open your eyes. Don't miss your miracle. All right, tell us whether we are pretty. Are you seeing that one leg is shorter than the other? This is why the pain is coming. You will literally watch it grow right now. Are you ready? Watch it in the name that is above all names. Watch this grow. Are you seeing it in the name of the Lord? Look at look at look at what is happening to this leg in the name of the Lord Jesus by the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Did you feel anything? What did you feel?
Now try walking. Stamp it. Come. Get up and try to stamp it. Try to stamp it. Just stamp it. Try to. You still feel pain? You still feel pain? It's... No. Are you serious? Come on, celebrate a miracle. Come, come up here. Jump. Can you jump? Look at. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Where's the other lady? While the ministers pray for you, this is a simple thing. I'm telling you, don't go around just pulling legs and disgrace yourself because that's what a lot of people do. You like this is not chambori. You disgrace yourself somewhere, someone injures you for nothing. Hallelujah. Praise God, sir. While they are praying so that we'll save time, they'll pray for you. Hallelujah. This is what's wrong with you? A fracture on your leg. Which of them? How long? Like seven months. Yes, sir. You've been walking with this. Yes, sir. You can't walk except you use it. Yes, sir. Look at me, my brother. I bring you life right now. Amen. I, look at me. Look at me. In the name that is above all names, I command a fractured leg to go. Amen. Let it join right now. See. Look at what is happening to him. Look at what is happening to him. This is the power of the Holy Ghost. This is the power of the Holy Ghost going through the leg. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Look at me, sir. Look at me. Can you walk? Look at me. Just start walking. Follow me. Look at this. Look at this. He came with crutches. Jump. Can you jump? Any pain? Fracture. A fractured leg. A fractured leg. A fractured leg. A fractured leg. Just got healed right now by the power of the Holy Ghost. A fractured leg. You're blind in one eye. What happened to you, sir? There was a friend who knows him. Who came here with him? Oh, you know him. He's a popular person. Is it true that he has been working with this crutch? Come on, give Jesus a shout of praise. Yahweh. I think we should give God some praise. Yahweh. for him. What happened to you, sir? Make sure you don't tell lies, so. Hallelujah. Actually, I, I had an accident. Listen, okay. The leg was paining me. The leg was paining you. Exactly. So, okay. When the man of God, uh, when Pastor Jake prayed for you, it got perfect. It, it became perfect. Yes. Come up, come up. Come up. Do what you couldn't do before. Do what you couldn't do. Jump up. Look at this. Look at this. Or AS, now is the time for it to change forever. Listen, I'm serious, I'm serious. Please make sure you believe we are not joking here. Outside, I see that there is a mighty miracle that God will soon do outside. AS, hallelujah. You can connect for any member of your family, anyone in this place, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we command AS and SS to change now to AA in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus I sense someone has been healed in the ear someone has been healed in the ear please check you came here with ear problem someone has been healed in the ear the Lord is showing me someone who has been healed in the ear Hallelujah. 
Sorry? My uncle has been treated for the past. Three Your years. uncle? Okay, hold on. I'm a footballer. My uncle has a twist. So every time. Your uncle has twisted? Yeah. How long? Time, three years now. Anytime okay. I'm running, the uncle will be making sound. Just remove your shoe. Let me make contact with it. What's wrong with you, sir? Irregular heartbeat. Eh? Irregular heartbeat. Oh, the irregular heartbeat. Watch it leave you now. It's a devil. Go! By the power of the Holy Ghost. Check yourself. Breathe. In and out. Test yourself. Could you do this before? Breathe in. Could you do this before? Look at this. Breathe in and out. Breathe in and out. Breathe in and out. You're free. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Please, ushers. Hold him. Let me just make contact with your feet. Hallelujah. Or oh, Bishop Stan, just pray with him. He will pray with you. Check yourself. You will be healed. Hallelujah. So we can concentrate. I, I used to have, I play hockey. I'm a sport. Okay, listen to this testimony. I play hockey. I'm a sportsman. And over the years, I've been having this muzzle pool. Muzzle pool, okay. Yes, but outside there, I was feeling something. Outside there, his legs started shaking. And right now, there's no... Right now, he's healed. Power of the Holy Ghost. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Pain in the right hand. There's someone I'm seeing pain here. Very severe pain. You even cry. Who is that person? It's time for you to rejoice. Pain. Severe pain is like a shock in your right hand. Who is that person? Pain. No, no, no. Check yourself, please. Check yourself and if act on it come on watch this could you do this before no. could you do this before watch a miracle happen could you do this before stamp it stamp it pastor stanley just prayed for him hallelujah the lord perfect you in the name of jesus christ how many of you are celebrating what god is doing in this place the hand the Lord is showing me someone severe pain in your right hand. Please, when we call your case, just run out quickly. You are the one. Good evening. Thank you. Where is the pain in your right hand? How long has it been? It's up to five years. Now. Up to five years. What's wrong with it? What happened? I don't know. Just like that. Whenever I stretch it, I feel pain. In the Can you turn it round, up and down? Hold on. Can you do that before? Yes, no. But you, you feel pain. Yes. All right. Watch what will happen to you right now. You believe that? <laughs> It is such fun to see, such fun to see. Satan lose. Hallelujah. Look at me. I come in a name that is above every other name. And we challenge this devil. It goes. Look at me. I want you to wind it as fast as you can. Go ahead. Don't think about it. Look at this. Hallelujah. Look at me. Sister, what happened to you? Could you do this before? Could you do this before? In the name of Jesus, the Lord perfects you by the power of the Holy Ghost. What's wrong with her? There was a pain here and you, there was a time I wake up in the morning and I found this on my hand. What is this? I don't know. Alright, I'm going to pray for you. Does it pain you? Yes. Does it pain you? Yes. The pain will stop. He is able more than out of her now in the name of Jesus accomplish what concerns me today in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus that devil of darkness be gone in the name of Jesus check yourself check yourself check yourself Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, bring this lady. Just bring her. For God wants to use you and make a mighty woman of faith. 
I'm saying that I don't know what it is that this lady matched, but she matched something that is demonic. That's what is happening to her. Jesus, do this for your glory. Do this for your glory. I set you free. I set you free. I set you free. I set you free. I set you free in the name of Jesus Christ. I set you free. I declare you free right now. Shalom. What's wrong? You dislocated your hands. Wow. God will give you a miracle now. I am the Lord that he led thee. I am the Lord your healer. I said the power of the Holy Ghost. who brought a sick person you are a guest please come and line up quickly you brought a sick person you brought a sick person please just pick up God is doing some you brought a sick person now is the time please come out let's save time you brought a sick person outside you brought an invited guest who is sick please come quickly bring them to the front What's wrong with you? Please, technical help us. Pain. Under my stomach, I also feel pain in my chest. Pains. I feel pain. You believe in Jesus Christ. You believe he'll set you free. Listen, sweetheart. What you see here are not stage managed miracles. Are you listening to me? You believe that? Please, can I have a lady? Just lay your hands on her chest, one of the washers. is a demonic oppression you will rise up totally fine come come you're welcome come what's wrong with you madam schizophrenia what schizophrenia mental schizophrenia we, i think we should employ some medical people who is studying you are a serious medical student or you are a doctor eh no we have doctors sir please come quickly quickly appreciate him Please, quick, 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 quick. Please hurry up, sir, and help us. Hallelujah. What is schizophrenia, sir? Schizophrenia is a psychiatric condition. Okay. That is characterized by hallucinations. You hear voices. You begin to see things that don't exist ah oh so it's like madness yes. like a psychosomatic condition you'll be free right now look at me my dear you believe that because devils he said the spirit of the lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor to bind up the brokenhearted to set the captives free huh my dear hold my hands hold my hands can you look at me? Can you shout Jesus? Shout it as loud as you can. Jesus. Out of her now. In the name of Jesus. By the power of the Holy Ghost. That devil of schizophrenia. Go. In the name of Jesus. Who, who brought her? What happens to her? Okay, okay. It's going to leave her. Are you listening to me? It's going to leave her forever. All right. She sees things that are not there. Yes, sir. All right. Yes, sir. 
and I'm seeing her waking up and shouting in the night. Yes. Is that true? Yes, in the night, people are sleeping. She just wakes up and starts shouting. Yes. That's what the Lord is showing me. The Lord set you free. Now, sister, look at me. It does not return to you again. And I also see the spirit of depression that has come upon you. The Lord sets you free. Look at me. Look at me. Run down there and run back. Run. I didn't say walk. Run. Run. Run like you're doing 100 meters relay. Do it one more time. Just do what I'm asking you to do. Now run back again. You are free in the name of Jesus Christ. Totally free. Totally free. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Sir, just please just spread yourself. Let's do that quickly. You just minister. We have to save time because everybody must be touched this night. Hallelujah. What's wrong with you, sister? There's this a headache I've been having headache. over a year now, yes. And it keeps making me present. Go! In the name of Jesus. Okay. I used to excrete blood. You used to excrete blood. It ends right now. Put your hands on your stomach. That devil of darkness. Be healed now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I've been having this particular backache. For backache. Five. Lay your hands there. The power of God will hit you so hard. In the name of Jesus. We totally hope. In the name of Jesus. They pray for you. Hallelujah. That's all. Alright, let's have all the sick people come and line up quickly. Sick people, quickly. Oh, oh, oh. Heaven. 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 You're sick in your body, quickly. Oh, oh, oh. Don't go back with your sickness. Those in the congregation be connected. Some of you will be receiving the healing anointing. In the name of Jesus. Go by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus.
outside if you know anybody in your family listen who is not feeling fine or you brought the picture of anybody to connect or anything while we are praying whether it's hiv or cancer i like you to be connecting are you listening the worshipers are they, they are worshiping it's not just for the formality of it they are creating an atmosphere are you listening to me are you listening to me so i want you to connect are you listening to me? I want you to connect to what God is doing. Hallelujah.
couldn't see. Is that true? Can you see me now? Can you see me now? Please hold this. Help me with a handkerchief, please. Can you see? Touch this. Touch this. Come and touch it. Come and touch it. Come and touch it. Come and touch it. That devil is a liar. In the name of Jesus, the Lord perfect you. Give God a shout of praise. There is lightning and thunder, miracles and wonders, sound of many waters, heaven on earth. of i know there are many people just go back to your seat but all of you who came out the five of you all of you come and hold your hands together all of you hold your hands together five of you but i'm going to pray for everybody look at me the power of god will touch you i sense a strong anointing are you listening to me a strong anointing lord let it move across right now in the name of the lord jesus Randa cross to kroto bashigeteba. Randa pros restoration for your family. Great restoration in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you. Now delay. Any kind of delay. Kataba kataba. No no no. Don't come out. Don't come out. Please just stay where you are. Just lift your hands by faith. Because I see in the realm of the spirit two gates. Bring this lady. Ah. I see a lot of demonic things. Bakatata. Come out of this family now. In the name of Jesus. Every yoke of bondage. 
Lift your hands, everybody. Projects that are not completed by your family members. That devil of delay is a spirit. Hear me. The Bible says, and the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah and he ran and overtook the chariot at the count of three the power of God as he's hitting you is touching your family members one two three like red oh God like red oh God every spirit of today go 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 and command God to be open break through in the name of the spirit everyone under the sound of my voice let the doors of destiny be open in the name of Jesus hallelujah hallelujah now if you are a student here I'd like you to shout amen you will know why you are shouting amen now because the Bible says that when Daniel was tested with his colleagues that there was a kind of spirit that was upon him and he was ten times suddenly his, his intelligent creation his, his capacity listen friends I told you that this is the year you will do fearful exploit in your academics listen and if you are in 100 level happy are you In the name of the Lord Jesus. Hold on, leave her. Don't touch her. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Look at me, young lady. I'm not speaking to you. I'm speaking to the spirit. Let the power of God bring you forth. Let the power of God bring you forth. You will leave your seat and come forward by the influence of the spirit. Let it happen right now. A contention of light. All those affected will come out by themselves. Leave them. All those affected, they will come out. The Holy Ghost will take you from your seat and bring you here in front. You will come out by the spirit. Stop that lady. Just stop her. Come. All of them, no, they can't stand. The Holy Ghost will bring you right in front by your, by himself. He will pick you from your seat. No matter how far you are, he will direct you and bring you in front. Leave them, leave them. They will come by themselves. It's the power of the Holy Ghost. He will bring them to the front. He will bring them to the front by himself. It's a sign and a wonder of the sovereignty of Jesus. Look, ushers, leave that girl. She will come out by them by herself. If it's the Holy Ghost, he will bring her to the front. You will come out by the Holy Ghost to the front by yourself. It's the compelling power of the Holy Ghost and the castle in the spirit of God.
you come out by the Holy Ghost you run to the front now by the power of the Spirit God will do a thorough work listen I'm telling you many of you will go back and see doors opening left and right I prophesy it into your life I prophesy it into your life I prophesy it into your life Sister, come out of her now in the name of Jesus. Be free. Say, you have supernatural exploits. I set you free now sister I set you free because she's speaking a language in the realm of the spirit and I hear what she's saying the Lord is setting your family free in the name that is above all names for after the count of five victory will be established that's what the Lord tells me one two Three, four, five. Please call this sister for me. Come, my dear. For God is not only going to set you free tonight, but God has begun a walk in your family. This is Kemi's sister, right? You will go back and see the dramatic things. The Lord is even restoring. I see financial restoration. Mighty financial restoration. There is a property your father wants to sell. Tell him not to sell it. There is a blessing coming. You just go and tell him. Are you listening to me? And for you, look at me. This is an evil spirit. Now, be free. Now. Now. This is an evil spirit. Look at me. I want to pray for you. Are you listening to me? Your family, can me come. Both of you stand. God is bringing a major, major restoration to your family. You believe that? Look at me. I don't know what it is, but the Lord is saying I should tell you that the Lord can bless you anywhere in Nigeria, in UK, or Canada. God just says I should tell you. Are you listening to me? Hold my hands. Lord, let this lady step into a new level of favor. Now, Kemi, for you, look at me. It's a restorative breakthrough God is bringing. What you are entering now, you, would have, you are supposed to have entered it since. But the Lord is restoring to you. In the name of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Ghost, by the power and the influence of the Spirit. Where's your friend? Where's your friend? The guy that came. Come. at me there are three breakthroughs God is giving you do you understand one I will not talk about it but you know what I'm talking about the second is in the area of your business and that restoration is going to come through wisdom and knowledge are you listening to me wisdom and knowledge but look at me God wants your heart like never before do you understand 
business books can only do so much. Are you listening to me? God must take your heart before he blesses your hand. Does it make sense to you what I'm saying? I want to pray for you. Hold my hands. Give him an impartation, oh God. Let him know he met the king of kings. Strong impartation. In the name of Jesus. I command freedom for you. I command breakthrough for you. By the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Come. You came from a university campus. Not Zaria. Where are you? You came from a university camp. Not Ebi Uzaria. I'm seeing someone from a campus. Not Ebi Who is that person? Please. Please come my brother. Come quickly. Come and stand here. My brother, look at me. God is going to cause a hunger for him in your heart. Like never before. This is not the kind of prayer you expected me to pray for you. But you don't worry. Is that true? Sir, what did you expect? To prophesy to my life because I've been experiencing so many. Please, technical help us. So, uh, I've been looking for God's direction in my ministry. Basically, my whole life Look is. Look at going... me, my brother. You, are, you just started ministry or something like that. Okay, you are going into ministry. Yes, sir. You leave ministry and pursue God. You are not equipped. You will die for nothing. Are you listening to me? Yes, sir. You just calm down. You need God. You need to experience the power of God. Yes, sir. Eh? Yes, sir. So that you don't jump into the error that people are having. However, yes, because you came here, yes, God will ignite a fire in you. Amen. It will first start with the spirit of prayer. Amen. It will fall on you. You will pray like a madman. Amen. Are you listening to me? Yes, sir. And from there, God will begin to give you direction. Amen. You believe that? Yes, sir. Hold my hands as tight as you can. <laughs> look at me. Just look at me. Lord, as you have shown me, ignite him with a fire. Fire upon you. In the name of the Lord Jesus, you will never be the same. Never be the same. The spirit of prayer, let it fall on you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Where is the gentleman? Come. From where? Footmina. Footmina. Mina again. How many of you know that God is doing something in me now? Hold my hands, my brother. You came, you will catch a fire. Look at me, look at me. You came with, an hung with a hunger. God will not leave you. Just lift one hand up. You will feel literal fire coming upon this hand. And it will flow through every part of your body. Lord, let it be done as you are showing me. In the name of the Lord Jesus. The name of the Lord Jesus. That strong fire upon you. It flows from your hand from your hand to every part of your body and look at me there is the spirit of leadership upon you you are going back with a strong spirit of leadership are you listening to me i'm hearing the name rebecca sorry we're out of time we'll round up now rebecca rebecca who is rebecca rebecca A student no where are you i'm in secondary school you're in secondary school yes, sir. will you be available if god uses you yes, sir. to bring a great revival in your school yes sir. what school is that jama secondary school jama secondary school hold my hands both of your hands say after me jesus i'm available like Catherine Kuhlman. Let your fire come upon me. Now look at me. Look at, look at the answer to the prayer. You will never be the same again. It's a mighty impartation. You are the same name. Come. You are a student of where? Maybe you. Yes. What department? English language. You believe God can do great things through you? Huh? Yes, sir. Say, Jesus. Jesus. Use me. Use me. Anoint me. Anoint me. All right, now you have the answer to your prayer. In the name of Jesus, ignite her. See, it's like fire 
in your tummy is that of the spirit you will never recover from it never never in the name of jesus foot me now okay why did you delay we have to hurry up please did you bring your prayer request all right quickly quickly your prayer request outside make sure your prayer request if you are outside please write it quickly and pass it just stay where you are to set free to win souls for the kingdom this and more may the Lord release upon you foot in uh, but you need to dedicate time for God uh, you don't pray you don't spend so much time in the word there's no other way to grow hmm? does it make sense to you what I'm saying but you came because you trust God to put a fire in you. Hold my hands, please. Lord, please put a fire in him. In the name of Jesus. That you will never be the same again. In Jesus' name. Your prayer request, please quickly pass them. Just pass it to the last person. We have to be out of here. Just wait because I need to prophesy to the life of everyone. So do that quickly. Outside, even if you are just coming. Wherever you are, please get a paper. Help one another with papers, please. Hallelujah. Please, quick, 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 quick. You should have written this before now, but write it quickly. Please. Because Pastor Jax is going to speak and prophesy the fire of evangelism. Are you listening to me? And Bishop is going to come and pray and prophesy and release the spirit of prayer. These two things. Are you listening to me? We have to do that quickly. The Lord is showing me doors that are opening. This is what I'm seeing. See, I'm seeing this thing again and again. Doors. 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 Many of you don't know the value of an open door. close to Jessica. Come. Yes, you. Come. My dear, you standing. You believe God can use you in a mighty way. You want him to use you. Lift your hands where you are. Lord, release an anointing upon her that will cause her to be mightily used. The Lord is showing me visions. I see two eyes being put upon you eyes being put upon you Lord I pray that she will begin to see great and mighty things beginning from today in the name of Jesus my dear God wants you you believe that and he wants you this is not the issue of just run away from all these men that want to run around you they don't even know where they are going focus on Jesus Christ are you listening to me you need him first ladies what you need first in your life is not a man is Jesus if you know how to love and relate with Jesus a man will become an asset to your life are you listening to me hold on we'll soon pray that prayer that special prayer to send away some people out of your life and bring the people God has destined do you like that kind of prayer but you must be willing and obedient sister look at me you want me to pray that God will anoint you you want to pray good friends an association of people who love God love is compulsory but relationship is not are you listening to me you mustn't relate with everybody you have a very tender heart let them not take you for granted hold my hands 
Jesus, please do something in her life, I pray. Please give her an anointing in the name of Jesus. Bless her. Use her for your glory in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Steve Strings, please can you come up and sing There is none like you, your guitar. Hallelujah. While you bring the prayer request, Steve Strings will sing There is none like you. I just sense that that's what we need. Do we have the prayer request? Please quickly. Quickly. If, let's, let's have it, please. Pour it here quickly, quickly. All right, there's this. If you've not written, just write. We'll give you one minute quickly. This is not a ritual. God answers prayers, I'm telling you. No one else can touch my heart like you do. I can search to all eternity, Lord, and find there is none like you. There's none like Jesus. There is none like you. There is none like you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, listen. I've been waiting for the Holy Ghost to signify it. Please, everybody, stand up. Jesus is calling many people tonight. Listen to me. Many of you have heard me preach. You've seen the miracles. There are many of you standing outside. And the Lord is speaking to you. Hallelujah. The Bible says, come unto me. All ye that are weary and heavy laden. And I will give you rest. Hallelujah. For many of you, you have been running away from God. Or you have been born again, but it's one leg inside. One leg outside. No one condemns you, but Jesus is calling you today. You came with your friend. But I like you. Don't let someone sitting by your left and right make you not to make this decision for jesus christ you need jesus christ he said i am the way there are many ways he said i am the truth hallelujah i'm going to count one to ten i like you to leave your seat and run out at that count of don't be ashamed the lord is talking to you many of you from the time i began to preach you have come to the end of the road as i count as i begin to count one to ten i like you to run and come out one Two, leave your seat and run inside and outside. Three, four, run out. Don't be ashamed of anybody. Five, outside. God is calling you. Jesus is calling you. Run out and come. Ushers, help them. Ushers, help them. Six, leave your seat. Forget about your friend. Forget about whoever you came with. We are waiting for you, seven. The name. Come like to the Jesus. Name Run to Jesus. Don't let your brother make you sit back there. He's there is a better life. There is a higher life. There is a greater life in Christ Jesus. Better than what you have experienced in eternity and in this world. No one. Seven. Jesus is still calling. Jesus. Jesus is still calling. No other name. No other name. Eight. Like the name. We have two more counts. Outside. No Jesus is still speaking no to a few people. No Don't be ashamed of anyone. Leave your friend. Leave your relatives. Go on and come here. We are waiting for the last person. We are waiting for the last person. Like the name of Jesus. Ten. Hallelujah. Just say, dear Lord Jesus, I come before you today, calling out to you, please help me, forgive me for my sins, make me a new creature, wash me with your blood, 
make me clean. I receive salvation in the name of Jesus. From today, I receive power to live a holy life in the name of Jesus. And Father, I pray for your people in the name of Jesus. Blessed Holy Spirit, you see their hearts. I ask that God, you uphold them with the power of your word. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that Lord, everything that has pulled them thus far, Lord, has pulled them far from you. Everything that has held them back. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray that Lord, you break them away from it in the name of Jesus. Give them strength to walk with you. You are blessed in the name of Jesus Christ and you are forgiven by the power of God in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please put your, hold on, just put your hands together for them. We welcome you to the greatest, biggest, most victorious family. Not Koinonia, the kingdom of heaven. God's own kingdom. Hallelujah. Listen to me. Jesus brought all of you here. I want you to begin a great and practical work. Are you listening to me? Please. We love you. I want your salvation to be genuine. Don't just make it emotional and then go back. Uh -uh. Are you listening to me? A Christian's life must be backed up by a radical shift. You must leave the things you used to do. There's power. You must break away from ungodly associations. There must be a practical step. That's why the power is upon you. Hallelujah. Now, you do this for me very quick. Very quickly. The ushers are going to have your details. Are you listening to me? Tomorrow, you're going to have a special session with Pastor Jakes. He's going to talk to you. He's going to follow you up. And then we'll get all of you filled with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And then you'll begin... Every time we get people born again, the moment we follow you up with some foundational teachings, once you get filled with the Holy Spirit, you march straight to prayer band for one month. Hallelujah. You pray for one month. After that time, you'll be strong enough. We want our fruits to abide. Hallelujah. I bless you with the blessings of the Lord. Whatever has held you down, it leaves you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let this be a new life for you. Please get up and follow the ushers. Please celebrate this harvest. Just follow the ushers. Don't worry, you will come back. Follow the ushers quickly. Hallelujah. Now, very quickly, please look up. We, we don't have time. Pastor Jakes is going to speak just in a few seconds and release upon us the spirit of soul winning. Are you listening to me? Everyone must become a soul winner. Hallelujah, sir. Hallelujah. Because God is going to be giving some of us a new heart. It starts with your heart, a compassionate heart. If you are willing and ready for this, the Lord will visit you with it. Some of you will literally feel like fire on your feet. That's what I'm sensing right now. A fire will come upon some of you, your feet. Thank you, blessed Lord. Lamb of God, we worship you. Lamb of God, we worship you. Up your hands. Lift up your hands as we pray. Blessed Father, Abba Father, we pray in the name of Jesus. I ask that God, you release from heaven. You release a fire from heaven, Lord. You release a fire upon your people from heaven. I ask in the name of Jesus, let there be a visitation. Let the presence of God come upon you. Let the fire of God come upon you. A passion for souls. In the name of Jesus, let fresh fire, let fresh fire be released upon your heart. Your heart begins to burn for souls and pants for it. You will not find rest. You will not find rest. In the name of Jesus, your tongue, the fire of God comes upon your tongue. 
in the name of Jesus Christ, the fire of God comes upon your feet. The Holy Spirit will lead you to, to speak the word, to speak the gospel, the angels of salvation. Lord, we pray that you release in the name of Jesus the four corners of this place. Let them be released. Let the oil and the mantle of evangelism be released. We pray. Lord, I pray that you grant your people vision for souls, a hunger for souls, for souls. Jesus! 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 Aprendo Siba, Rieto Mianta, Intush Limante, Ristuminta, Mionte, Itapila, Suminante, Itrusikrasha, Rista Mintaha, Sumelete, Itrosuba, Tala, Lord, I pray that God this fire will burn continually. We pray to burn continually, Lord. We pray in their hearts. Our hearts will be on fire. Hallelujah. That's the spirit of evangelism. That's the spirit of evangelism. Now, Bishop is going to pray. I pray this will fall strong on people. The spirit of prayer. Many of you need to pray. Many of you need to pray. Many of you need to pray. Lord, the spirit of grace and supplication rest in the house in the name of Jesus. Lord, the fire of the Holy Spirit and the cold of the Lord rest upon your heart that your heart will yearn for his presence that the Lord will be successful for your family while I will come to the God and take the person to the God while I will come and deliver the truth and the people of God from the heart and the mouth of the enemy for the Lord find you and love you and intercept you men and women of prayer in the name of Jesus may the authority of God rest upon your head that you will speak for him you will speak for him you will speak for him you will reach the past in the truth of God in the name of Jesus you trust God the glory of the Lord upon the church from the blood of God and you will be a lead that will bring you right back I'd like you to know it will be answered. Lord, we pray. Stretch your hands and say, Lord, go ahead and let's pray. Lord, do mighty things. Solve problems. Bring impossible miracles. In the name of the Lord Jesus, as we 
make make contact with these requests in the name of the Lord Jesus prophetically wipe the tears of many in the name of the Lord Jesus in the name of the Lord Jesus Rakata prokoto prokoto balaba. Rakata prakata 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 balaba. Rakata prakata 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 balaba. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, we pray. Every prayer point here, let it be met. In the name of Jesus, Lord, release supernatural miracles for the sake of Your glory. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now lift your hands. I want to prophesy. This is the final thing I will go. Please, if you came here, now is the time for you to receive something. Please, don't go back the same. Hallelujah. Listen. See, the apostolic anointing is not just talk. Are you listening to me? The apostolic anointing is an office. Are you, are you listening to me? It's an office. It's not just apostle. This, no, 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 no. It's an office. No man works. The Bible says he gave on to some apostles. It's a position of authority. Are you listening to me? It's an office that is recognized in the spirit. It's, an elect, it's not an issue of prayer and fasting. It's an office. God gives us this office to open up doors for others. It's an election by grace. And if you believe it tonight, you will step into a level of blessing. Lift your hands. Lord, if I be a servant of God, truly called into this apostolic office, my God, confirm this anointing upon me. Once again, I invoke the anointing that was given upon me when Jesus appeared to me. My God and my King, let there be a performance. Ta 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 ya ta. Doors be open. Doors be open. Doors be open. Doors be open. I challenge thrones. I challenge dominions. I challenge offices. I stand in the anointing of this office. I compel every closed door over your life, over your academics, delaying marriage. I release you. I call your partner to come to you in the name of Jesus. I pray. I pray that the favor of God for he has granted unto me by grace my God and my King. I see it like water flowing from the ground. Let the favor of God sweep. Let it sweep across this congregation. Outside, I prophesy favor. I prophesy favor. I prophesy favor. If you can hear my voice, receive favor. Receive favor. In your academic favor, in your financial favor, in your relationship favor, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I want to prophesy speed upon your life and that of your family members. In the name of Jesus, before the next miracle service, I prophesy, run with the spirit of Elijah supernatural accomplishment exploit by the power of the Holy Ghost exploit 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 hallelujah I pray for every project whether in your life or your family building project capital project businesses in the name of Jesus God of heaven the one who is at work in this place I invoke by the power of the Holy Ghost let there be grace for completion receive it receive it outside receive it outside receive it I pray for your academics in the name that is above all names 
I want to release it upon you. And if you will believe, I release five points in the name of Jesus. I release it. I release it. I release first class in the name of the Lord Jesus. Supernatural intelligence. Every dull mind, I command you be productive, be intelligent. Every course you cannot understand, go back and challenge it now. In the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I pray against habit, masturbation, pornography, whatever it is. If it's a habit that is not of God, this moment you have prayed, you have fasted, you have done everything you know to do. But I come under the anointing in this office. I command, be free in the name of Jesus. Be free in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I pray all those who are trusting God for life partners and for marriage. Listen, please, if you are not trusting God, you better put your hand. We are not playing here. We are very, very serious. If you are trusting God, for I don't mean people coming around. First and foremost, any guy roaming around your life just to mess up your life, I pray that tonight, God will open your eyes. In the name of Jesus, may God expose destiny destroyers this night. May God connect you with the will of God for your life. I command supernatural marriages for you and your loved ones. In the name of Jesus, I command any kind of terminal disease and I see this, the Lord is showing me ladies, many diseases, infection, whatever it is. I cause it now to its root in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I pray for your finances. My God and my King, if your word is true, between now and the next miracle service, if it is the God of heaven we serve, you will receive a call if it is a God if it is God that we serve may you receive a call that will shock you I prophesy it I program your spirit to receive it in the name of Jesus I hear a call it's a call it's a call that's what God told me it's a supernatural call receive it in the name of Jesus Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Many of you who have been confused about your life, especially men, receive grace to sit down and be established. In the name of Jesus, no more confusion. The reason why you were born, listen to me, the reason why you were born, between now and the next two weeks, everyone here who does not know, you are just roaming around the surface of the earth, escorting men, if God be God, may the reason why you were born be revealed to you in dreams, in visions, by prophetic encounters, by the revelation of the word. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Finally, I pray for you. Lift your hands. There are certain anointings that God has put upon this house. Are you listening to me? Number one, the presence of God. I don't idolize this but it's true number two the favor of god the wisdom of god financial prosperity are you listening to me and such as we have my god and my king may it be released upon you now favor wisdom the presence of god the power of god the miraculous i activate the gift of the spirit now all across the building the gift of the spirit receive it gift of healing faith prophecy tongues interpretation of tongues i activate your spirit man visions visions i call for fivefold ministry fivefold offices let the apostolic arise 
Let the prophetic arise. Let the evangelistic arise. Let the pastoral arise. Let teaching graces arise. Ta 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 ta. Ra ba 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 ba. Boko topotia. Upon ladies, strange order of the prophetic. Strange order of the prophetic. Strange order. Strange order. Grace to see. Grace to hear. Grace to move in power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're rounding up. Please listen to me. In closing, all of you hear me inside and outside. Please listen. We're training people to be men and women of character. Are you listening to me? Not just anointing. It's not enough to have power. Those who are students, you must have character. This is the year you will demonstrate the character of the spirit. Be disciplined. Be dedicated. You can't be flying around. Every party cannot be it. Hallelujah. Your Christianity must bear fruit and everyone must witness it. Hallelujah. So as you leave this place, go and call all those people that cause you to walk in unrighteousness and let them know you have begun a new walk with God. I'm telling you, do it. Go and delete every ungodly song in your phone. Break all those CDs and kick it out of your house. You are either a Christian or you are not. Hallelujah. You are either a Christian or you are not. Say I'm a man or a woman of character. Yes. The character of the spirit must be at work in your life. Your conversation. You cannot be speaking as if you are not born again. And then when you come to church, you say, hallelujah, no. You must speak like a Christian. Are you listening to me? Say amen. amen. Inside and outside, say amen. amen. You must speak like a Christian. Hallelujah. You must act like a Christian. Act like Jesus is Lord of your life. Anything cannot be it. Be disciplined. You are a leader. And be humble. Say, I receive grace for humility. If you are an arrogant person in this place, I set you free from that spirit of arrogance. Be humble. Listen. Make sure by love you serve people. Are you listening to me? The greater one in the kingdom. Gone are the days of all these men of God. Ah, protocol for me. Uh -uh. The greater one is the one who can kneel down and serve. Are you listening to me? Take away that wrong mindset of ministry that has been given to people. Oh, you are the woman of God. You are the man of God. Bend down. Let your work speak for you. Let to wash the feet of others. Consider others better than yourself. Are you listening to me? Say I'm a Christian. If you are coming here for the first time, let me prophesy into your life. Please leave your seat and come out inside and outside. Appreciate them very quickly. Please come out here quickly. Come out here quickly. Please clap for them. They are coming. Ushers, lead them to come to the front. You are welcome. Give them a koinonia welcome. We'll soon be out of this place now. Hallelujah. Quickly, quickly. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, koinonia. Will you appreciate them? Hallelujah. 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 Please keep coming. We'll pray for you. I want to thank every one of you for coming. This is Koinonia. Hallelujah. Especially for many of you who came all the way. Thank you so much for coming. We appreciate you. We receive you. Hallelujah. We are happy. We are proud of you. We want to pray for you. That this will be the beginning of unusual hunger for God. That this will be the beginning of passion for the things of the spirit and that this will be the beginning of an unlimited life of breakthrough in the name of Jesus saints of God stretch your hands towards them as we pray we are praying for you may the Lord bless you we pray that God will make you better than you are in the name of Jesus for those of you who have been healed and touched I pray that your miracle will remain in the name dearly beloved I hope you were blessed by this message I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. 
and that is i want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of jesus christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of christianity and then don't forget to like this video don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing jesus i'll see you again bye